Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Fans. And it's really a pleasure to have Al Rosen, oh, the capable third baseman of the Cleveland Indians, on our direct program this afternoon. Al, they tell me you're not going to play this afternoon. That's right, Frankie. Uh, due to this thigh injury of mine, my right leg has been acting up quite bad. You remember seeing me run. That's right. And we feel that possibly I'd be of more value to the team in a pinch hitter's role or even playing in the later innings of a ball game if necessary. And certainly I can't help the ball club uh, by trying to go all the way. Well, I know you would help it if you were in then. Now, look, Al, what's happened in these last two games from a player's viewpoint? Well, strictly from a player's viewpoint, we feel that uh, one base hit in either ball game or even a fly ball in either ball game, the game might have gone the other way. Uh, we ran into magnificent pitching, a uh, terrific defensive ball club. Uh, even though I must say for our own pitchers, I think our pitchers were as good as uh, anything we saw from the Giants. We just didn't get the runs that the Giants did. They capitalized more on opportunities than we did. Uh, Wynn picked a terrific game yesterday, but how about that little Antonelli? Uh, Johnny has come a long way since I saw him this spring, and he certainly uh, deserves the reputation that we've uh, received, uh, that we've heard about him. Johnny certainly is one of the finer left-handers in the game. He's certainly as good as anything we've seen in our league. Did you hit against him in the All-Star game? Uh, yes, I did. How'd you do? Well, I think John had a bad day, and uh, by the great of uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Did you uh, hit a, who yes, did home runs? You hit two home runs in the All-Star game. Yes, I did, did, right. run? I did. Now, what happened yesterday with the man on second base? Well, I think Johnny was just a better pitcher yesterday. Uh, maybe I was a... Worst hitter, I don't know, but Johnny fooled me yesterday. I certainly wasn't looking for a fastball with man on set, the tying run on second base. Al, didn't he throw you two fastballs? Yes, he did. He got one up around my letters, which uh, I think is my long ball, the, the fastball up, and then he got another one right down around my knees, and uh, I should have been swinging, Frank. Al, yeah, you know, we've been uh, hearing so much about uh, uh, playing in a certain ballpark. Do you think uh, a ballpark makes any difference? No, I really don't. I think that sometimes the ballpark looks funny to you when you first walk in it, but most fellas that have been around the big leagues for a few years have managed to see most of the ballparks. Now, our club has seen the uh, polo grounds. We played numerous exhibition games there at the end of our spring training season. So, uh, actually, there's no advantage, I don't believe, any pitcher working in a certain ballpark or any hitter having to hit against a certain wall in the ballpark. Well, it's certainly been a terrific series so far. I know for a fellow, in my case, has been in as many uh, World Series games. I, I've been getting a terrific thrill out of this thing. Say, so, yeah, i got a little gift here for you, and it's a new Gillette one-piece razor set. And in the back here is a 1954 World Series record book. I know you'll enjoy that. And just stick around with me for a minute, will you? Okay. I want the fans to look for this Gillette display at your favorite store. You'll find this big uh, little book filled with baseball tracks. And they got the diagrams of all the ballparks. All the major league ballparks. Now, here's a Cleveland Stadium. See, 73,500. That's quite a stadium. The seating section and everything's right in there. And you got 112 pages a real dope on World Series history. And then we turn back here, Al, this is important. I think this is a great little thing in this book. Hints on winning baseball. And then you got batting. You know, it's good for little leaguers, good for semi-professional ball players, college ball players. In fact, I'm going to kick out of reading it. It's got base running, fielding, pitching, and the player rosters of all clubs. And I hope the fans will get this quick. Last year, a lot of fans waited a little too long. And thousands of fans missed out, so I hope they'll bear down this year and get them soon. Al, Rosen, lots of luck to you. Thank and you. I hope that leg comes along, because fans, here's a great guy on the field and off the field. Thanks for being on our program, right Al. Lots of luck to you. And our next uh, will be a young fellow that did a courageous job yesterday. I admire this young guy. He walked out his, his first World Series game. Johnny Antonelli. 
How old are you now, John? 24, Frank. 24? Okay. Now, I want to ask you one question. I felt for you in that first inning yesterday with the three men on. What did Leo say when he walked out to the mound? Were you nervous? No, I don't think I was uh, nervous. I believe I was trying a little hard. Being well, I would have been. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I mean, uh, he just uh, tried to calm me down, I believe. He didn't actually say much about the game. He just came out there to talk to me, and uh, that was it. Say, in the last inning, you had a man on first and third. One out. Okay. What were you firing to uh, Vic Worth? Uh, mostly fastballs um, at that time, Frankie. That's when you did a... Let me brag about you a little. I know you don't you don't care about it too much. But for a young guy, 23, 24 years old, pitching his first World Series game, this kid in the ninth inning, the Giants leading 3-1, to one, did a terrific job to count 3-2. and two. Okay. I think uh, he fouled off about five or six pitches. Five or six pitches, and still you didn't walk him. Okay. What about the double play ball, the ball that uh, Rigaldo will... Uh, wasn't that the fellow Rudy Rigaldo hit the ball with the short stop dog? Yes, Were sir. you ready to go to the clubhouse for that well, play? Uh, actually, I thought we had it, and uh, I was jumping up and down if you had seen me, but uh, I guess uh, I was a uh, step uh, off on that one. Say, John, where's your home? Uh, right now, I'm living in Lexington, Massachusetts. Oh, right outside of Boston? That's right, about 12 miles. Uh, you're married, aren't you? Yes, I am. And how about the little youngsters? A little, a little daughter, a little one daughter. year old. And uh, how about Papa and Mama? Are they here? Yes, my father and mother are in here, uh, here at uh, Cleveland right Boy, now. Boy, I bet they got a kick out of that baby yesterday, didn't they? No, they certainly did. Hey, John, you're a great kid. You know, I had on that baseball all summer long, 25 wins, and you owe me a, a couple of Coca Colas. You know that, don't you? <laughs> but look, here's a Gillette razor. And that little World Series record book, I know you like it. I want you to take that new Gillette one-piece razor and the 1954 World Series record book. And you can get your copy at your favorite store. And, John, I know you'll get a kick out of that. Thank you very much, Frank. Huh? Hey, I can certainly use that. There's a lot of good stuff in there. When are you going to pitch again? Well, I don't know, Frank. If he needs me Sunday, I'll be ready to pitch. If not, probably Monday. All right, lots of luck to you. Okay. Well, fans, the clock says it's time to go until we take you back to Gillette's broadcasting booth. And now, fans, this is your silly Jimmy Dudley, back to you at Mutual's Radio Booth, and we're ready for today's third game of the 1954 World Series. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball, solely for the entertainment of our audience. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Rebroadcast or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the commissioner is prohibited. Now turning you over to, just before turning you over to Al Helfer, here quickly are the lineups for today's game. For the Giants, at first base, leading off, Whitey Lockman. At shortstop, Alvin Dock. Don Mueller, right field. Willie Mays, center field. Hank Thompson, third base. Monty Irvin, left field. Davy Williams, second base. Wes Westrom, catching. And Ruben Gomez, the pitcher. He's won 17 and lost nine during the regular season. For the Cleveland Indians, the home team. Leading off, Al Smith, left field. Bobby Avila, second base. Larry Doby, center field. 
Nick Wirt, first base. Hank Majeski, third base. Dave Philly, right field. George Strickland, shortstop. Jim Hegan, catching. And Mike Garcia, the pitcher. Garcia, during the regular season, won 19 and lost eight. The umpires for the third game of the 1954 World Series, calling the balls in strikes back of the plate is Jocko Conlon. At first base, Stephen. Second base, Al Barrett. Third base, Charlie Berry. On the right field foul line is Ron Warnicke. On the left field foul line is Larry Neff. Now the Indians have taken the playing field, and today's game is ready to get underway. And here is the man who will get today's game underway for us, Mitchell's Al Helfer. Big Al, come in. Thank you very much, Jimmy Dudley. Hi, everybody. And we're very happy to see that Chris Speaker, the old Gray Eagle, is here in person. He's gotten over his illness, and he's throwing out the first ball here this afternoon. And Chris Speaker throws the first ball out to Jim Hagan, the starting catcher for the Cleveland Indians. And prior to getting started on this game here this afternoon, we have right now 10 seconds pause for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN, your exclusive World Series station in Chicago. And out of the business of hand here at the vast municipal stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, where this afternoon Al Lopez has sent in a patched up lineup to meet the New York Giants, who have won two of the two games already played in the 1954 Classic. At third base, we have Hank Majeski, as Jimmy Dudley has already told you. Hank Majeski, one of the veterans of Major League play, taking over for Al Rosen. Al tried it. His leg was too bad, and he figured that he was in there hurting his ball club rather than helping it. So he and Al Lopez got together. And Al Rosen is on the bench this afternoon and will be utilized as a pinch hitter if needed. Hank Majeski is at third base. So let's set the Indians for you defensively now. It's Big Mike Garcia, the vice daily right-hander, is on the mound for the Cleveland Indians. Old Bell Chest is throwing down to his battery mate, Jim Hegan. At first base is Victor Wirtz. At second base, Bobby Avila. At shortstop, George Strickland. At third base, Hank Majeski. Out in left field is Al Smith. The center fielder is Larry Doby. And at right field here this afternoon is Dave Philly, the kid from Texas. And stepping up to the plate is the first hitter here for the New York Giants, batting at 1-1-1 in the series, 1-9. for nine is Whitey Luckman. Whitey Luckman hitting left hand, standing deep at the plate. Now, broadcasting spot here at Cleveland is a very fine one, right behind home plate, just slightly off on the left-hand side of home plate. Jocko Conlon, the plate umpire, looks down over the shoulder of Jim Hegan, and we're about to get started on the third game of the 1954 World Series. Please remember the Giants have won two, and Cleveland has won none. So this is the game, as far as Cleveland is concerned. Big Mike Garcia delivers the fastball. Whitey Lockman swings on this line drive. Hit into right center field. It's going to be in there for the base hit. Over is Philly to cut it off. Lockman down to first base to hold on. So the first pitch here this afternoon is a line shot single in the right center field by Whitey Lockman. That is the first hit given up by Garcia, who surrendered only 220 base hits all year. Now coming up to the plate, batting at 375, is Alvin Dark. He has three for eight in the series so far. I feel facing just about straight away. This is a big ball orchard here. 320 feet down the left and right field line to 410 feet to the restraining fence in center. A plenty of room to go get him here in this ballpark. Mike Garcia, the big right-hander from Bricksteria, kicks. Third around at the mound, looks down at Alvin Dark, who has that wide spread eagle stance leaning over. Whitey Lockman leads off first down, comes the pitch, pass ball, fired in at the knees for a call strike. When Big Mike is right, that fastball of his comes zipping in there. Hank Majeski, expecting a bunt, is playing a shallow third. And Vic Wirtz, holding Whitey Lockman on at first base, will come charging in when the next pitch is made. They're expecting that the New York Giants will try to get that runner down in scoring position. Whitey Lockman is pretty fast, and he's liable to be moving any time. The pitch is made, and this time it's swung on. Alvin Dark hits a foul ball down off the first base line, back into the crowd, out of play. Hank Majeski, number five, moving back there to take his station at third. It's been a long time since we've seen Hank Majeski start a ball game, but he's always on tap and ready. You know, I got an interesting note on Hank Majeski for you here in just a moment, and I'll pass it along to you. Mike Garcia checks his runner over at first base. That's Whitey Lockman taking a pretty good size lead. Vic Wirtz on the inside corner. We'll look at Alvin Dark now. The pitch to him is swung on. A pretty good hit and run man trying to punch the right field, fouls it off again, and that's strike two. Hank Majeski, the oldest player among all of today's World Series eligible, is playing at third base for Cleveland. He'll be 38 next December the 13th. Now you'll find the ages, the heights, the weights, and the records of all the series players in the Gillette World Series book. Hope you have yours. Next pitch to play the swing on Alvin Dark and this is called Strike Play. That's 
the first struck out in the World Series, but he strikes out here for big Mike Garcia. Mike Garcia had 130 strikeouts over the course of the regular season. Now here's John Mueller, the pesky guy at the plate. Pesky for him from the standpoint that he's laying that base hit for you when you uh, need it the most. John Mueller has two for nine in the series, batting at 222. Has struck out only one time. Whitey Rockman, who opened with a line shot single into right center field, is still on the first base for the Giants. Mike Garcia has to bear down from the opening pitch. He's ready to go here to left-handed batting John Mueller, the choke hitter. In comes the first pitch, nice fastball, over to knee for a called strike. The big Mike, when he throws, is a little off balance. That is, uh, when he finishes up, he falls towards first base. When uh, he started out in the spring this year, he tried to correct that and finish up in a squared away position in order that he may see in front of balls and balls that were hit back to his right, the left of the pitcher's mound as we look out from the diamond. But he found that he was not as effective with his pitches, so he went back to his old style. He delivers now the fastball, swung on, hit down off the rubber of home plate, a high bounce to Avila. The play goes to Tripton to one to throw back. There's one in time, gets away from Pickford. He's is backing up, there goes Mueller trying to second, the throw goes down, and he's in there. The throw got away from Victor Woods. He had to reach for it. It was a hurried throw by George Tripton. And we'll probably have an error charge on the play. So we'll wait for the official scorers, Mr. McCauley, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Clemento, to see uh, what their decision is going to be on this one. We'll allow the runner to go from first down to second. It's going to be an error on George Strickland. So put John Mueller on at second base on the error. Committed by George Strickland on his overthrow at first base, trying to get a double play. And incidentally, we have not had a double play in the World Series up till now. So Mueller was at first on the fourth out of Whitey Lockman at second base. And the play went from Avila to Strickland. So we have two outs, one on, and Willie Mays coming up. We'll get to get a base hit in the series. Garcia throws in the fastball and brushes the uniform blouse, driving the batter away from the plate. That's ball one. Willie Mays in this series so far has walked three times. He struck out once. He has gone 0 for 5. No hit for five official times up. Mays, the right-handed batter. Quite a ball hawk. And the National League batting champion. Steps away from the plate now. His count is one ball and no strike. Up until just this moment, when George Strickland committed the error, the throwing error at first base, allowing Don Mueller to scoot on down to second, the Cleveland Indians were absolutely errorless in the World Series. Garcia checks his runner at second. Delivers a play to soft curveball. It's swung on by Mays and punched back foul right off of the right of our Gillette microphone. Bouncing up into the press section and bounces down into the television camera. So somebody goes home over there and that camera crew very happily this afternoon with the souvenir of the World Series. There are two outs here in the top of the first inning. Don Mueller is the runner at second base for the New York Giants. There is no score here with legend overcast skies trucking to pour rain down on us any minute. The pitch of the plate is high and inside to Willie May. The count is two balls and one strike. We've got more airplanes flying over this municipal stadium here this afternoon that even Jimmy Dudley, an old pilot himself, can shake a stick at. But he's flying high right here in the broadcasting booth. He doesn't have to be in that plane this afternoon. Jimmy invited me to take a plane ride with him, and I said, uh, what's the simmer down after the series is over? We'll do it. Willie Mays up at the plate with a count of one ball and two strikes. Big Mike Garcia has a runner on his second behind him. There are two outs for the Giants here in the top half of the first inning. There is no score. Out here playing sand around the left and deep as Mike Garcia throws the overhand fastball. Mays swings and doesn't get it. Up strike two. The vice daily right-hander came right back and poured that ball in over the fifth from the inside corner. Mays like it. Two balls and two strikes to count on number 24, Willie Mays. Jocko Conlon handling the plate here this afternoon in the third game of the World Series. Down comes the pitch to Mays. Fastball swung on. Hit the right field. It's Andre. As soon as he comes in, he cuts the ball. It bounces off his chest. He throws to second base as Mueller comes on in the score. So Willie Mays gets his first base hit. Willie Mays, a single in the right field, driving a run here, and the Giants lead one to nothing. Don Mueller scooping around, and they're coming on in from second base to score. So the error definitely has hurt right up till now. That's the second hit of Mike Garcia and run number one. So Cleveland's behind here in the top half of the first inning. The Giants have a runner on at first base, and Willie Mays, a pretty good hit and run guy. Up at the plate, a pretty good hit and run guy with a stick in his hand is Henry Thompson. He's batting at 333 in the series, two for six. 
and he played spectacularly at third defensively. A fastball comes from the tie outside as the sun breaks out to cast a shadow here at Cleveland for the first time. One ball and no strikes is the count on Hank Thompson, a little left-handed hitter standing deep at the plate. The weather man said exactly at one o'clock we could expect the heavens to open up and rain the four down on us, but it hasn't happened so far. Garcia leans forward. Looks back over his left shoulder, checking Willie Mays at first. The pitch is made to the plate. Thompson takes it high inside. Willie Mays holding right on there at first base. Two balls, no strikes. The count on Thompson. Hank Thompson batting at 3.33 in series play. Hank has um, walked twice, struck out once in the two games that have preceded this one. Percy leaning forward to take his sign, checks his runner Willie Mays. He's always a threat to go. Down comes the pitch. Mays flux going, and the pitch is taken at the plate for ball three. Garcia asks Jocko Conlon for another baseball and gets it. I wish you like here at the start of the third game of the World Series to compliment the umpires for the work they have done in this World Series so far. We've had two fine jobs behind the plate in the first and second games. Al Barlick of the National League in the first game, a mighty fine job behind the plate, and Charlie Berry, the veteran American League umpire, came up with an equal performance yesterday. And here's Jocko Conlon, a very fine veteran, working the plate this afternoon. An overhand fastball is in there for strike, and the count on Thompson now is 3-1. and one. Garcia back to visit the Rosen bag. Number 25, standing down there on the mound. Steps up, takes his position on the rubber. Willie Mays will take a lead at first now. The first holds the inside corner on him. The check of the runner, down comes the pitch, taken. It's outside by Shade on a let-up curveball. So Thompson draws his third base on balls in the series. The first one here this afternoon. The first walk given up by Garcia. Garcia walked 71 over the regular season. Now hitting right-handed is Monty Urban. Monty has gone 0 for 4 in the series. He's batting, of course, at 0 0 0. The right hand hitter has an opportunity of knocking in his first run as Willie Mays has moved down to second on the walk handed by Garcia to Thompson. The first pitch to Monty Irvin is a strike. Monty backs to scoop up a handful of dirt, dries hands. Rubs him down along his uniform trousers, steps back in, beats the bat down on the rubber of home plate. Garcia now standing out in the sunlight. The sun has broken forth in all of its brilliance here for at least a moment. Delivers to the plate. It's taken high and inside for ball one. One ball and one strike to count on Monty Urban, the big left fielder of the New York Giants. Batting number six in the order. He'll be followed by Davey Williams if he's needed. Five men have come to the plate. One run has scored by the Giants. Has been scored by the Giants. They lead one to nothing. Willie Mays at second. Hank Thompson's on at first. Two down. Garcia can with an overhand let-up pitch, but outside at the shoulder. That's ball two. Two balls and one strike. And there's going to be some activity down in the bullpen now for the Cleveland Indians. Got a right-hander up and starting to throw for Cleveland. That'll be Art Houdeman. Art Houdeman up throwing for Cleveland in the Cleveland bullpen. Down back of the right field line. Note that Steve Jazz just put up here, and I believe that's true as I took a glance back through the books. The first team to score in both games that have already been played lost the ball game. The pitch is swung on. There's a high foul ball hit off to the right of the plate and way back into the customer. Two balls, two strikes on Monty Irvin. Yeah, that's right, Paul. Uh, Cleveland scored first in the first game and they uh, scored first in the second game, and they went on to lose both of them. And now the Giants score the first time here in the top half of the first inning. Just uh, an oddity going along in the series that uh, we'd like to know for you. Two balls, two strikes to count on Monty Irvin with runners at first and second, two down, top of the first, the Giants leading one to nothing. Now Garcia is set, checks his runner, Willie Mays at second, delivers the plate and overhand fastball. Monty Irvin punches the pile off the first baseline. There goes Hegan over near the Cleveland dugout, and Hegan's a guy gets in and makes the catch. Catch on a foul ball by Jim Hegan. So here in the first inning for the New York Giants, one run on a pair of base hits. There was one walk mixed in there. There was an error committed by Cleveland, and two men were left on. So the score at the end of the top half of the first inning is the New York Giants one. They're now coming to back Cleveland Indians nothing. 
Yes, sir. This is uh, got to do it game for the Indians if they want to preserve their World Series win record. If you have the 1954 Gillette World Series record book handy, you know how it sets up your enjoyment of the game. You'll find it equally valuable this winter and when baseball rolls around next spring. This free pocket-sized book index so anyone can put his finger on what he wants quickly gives all-time series scores, the record of every player, modern record-breaking performances, basic rules, baseball playing, scoring instructions, and for budding big leaguers, there are also hints on winning baseball. Get your copy. Buy a Gillette Super Speed Razor set for $1, the regular price. The record book is attached and it's free, but hurry, they're running out fast. Now into the last half of inning number one here at the Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. One to nothing in favor of the New York Giants. They scored one time on two base hits. Took advantage of a Cleveland error. And we have the first unearned run in the 1954 World Series. Now stepping up to the plate, hitting right-handed is Al Smith. Young fellow who led off for Cleveland yesterday by poking a home run out of the park at the polo ground. He has uh, three hits for eight at-bats, batting at 375. He crowds up on the plate, stands three-quarters deep, and he's a choke hitter. Ruben Gomez from Francisco, Puerto Rico, is on the mound for the New York Giants. Makes the first pitch, a fastball that's under the knees for ball one. Ruben Gomez, on the regular season for the New York Giants, won 17 ball games, lost nine, six, four shutouts. His battery mate is the very dependable West Westrom. At uh, first base, Whitey Lockman. Second is David Williams, the shortstop captain, Alvin Dark. At third, Hank Thompson. Out in left field, Marty Irvin. The center fielder is Willie Mays. And in right field is Don Mueller. Al Smith up at the plate waiting now. Gomez, the right-hander, throws the side on fastball. And the south side, the cross-fire misses for ball two. Two balls, no strike. Out here on Al Smith. Thompson's playing a rather shallow third base on his right-hand hitter. Right-hander throws another side armor. This one's in off a hip. Right tight up against the batter for ball three. Outfield fanned around the left. For Smith, he'll put that long ball for you. He proved that yesterday, leading off Paul Craven. The wearer of number 32. Sondland looks down over the shoulder of Weston. Here comes Gomez's pitch. Sidearm let up. is outside the ball four. Craven's got the tying one on. That's the second time Smith has walked in the series. First base on ball given up by Gomez. Here's Bobby Avila. Bobby Avila. He's batting at 222. He has two for nine in the series. One on, nobody out here in the last half of the first inning. Ruben Gomez looks over at first base to see what Whitey Luckman's doing about uh, holding him close, and he is. Bobby Avila standing in, batting right-handed. The American League batting champion. Gomez throws the pitch to him. He's going to break the swing on and foul tip. So Al Lopez wanted to get that man down to second, get him around. Right away, the gay senior playing hit and run ball here before the thousands that have jammed in here to the municipal stadium in Cleveland. The Giants are leading in the ball game one to nothing by virtue of their one run score to the first. And where of number one himself, Bobby Avila, the pet and pride of Veracruz, Mexico, up at the plate here for the Indians. Gomez comes in with a pick. There's the bunt. Down to the left of the Gomez comes off. Field throws the first base in time. They've got Bobby Avila. And there is the runner moving down to second. Smith overran second, almost uh, was thrown out. Buddy Luckman whipped that ball over quickly. He short stop Alvin Dark. So Avila is out, sacrificing very successfully. A very nicely placed bunt for the left of pitcher's mound as you look out on the diamond. Gomez in a big hurry, made the play to Whitey Luckman. Here is Larry Doby. Alvin Dark talking to Ruben Gomez. As this Puerto Rican right-hander gets ready now to pitch to left-hand hitting Larry Doby. The center fielder for the Cleveland Indians has been quite a star for them over the years, particularly this year in the run-sided in department and in the home run department. 
So Smith is on at second base, a pretty fleet foot guy who can uh, really move around the bases. Doby has a chance to tie this ball game up should he come through with a base hit. Side on fastball, the Doby's low into the dirt. And that is uh, ball one. Set. On comes the pitch. A fastball that drives Dolby back from the plate to slip over the inside corner chest high right under the letter for a call strike. One ball, one strike. The count on Larry Dolby. He holds up that way down by the end. Starts to bend his knees as though he were about to get down on them. Opens his pants just slightly down toward first base. The outfield is around right and deep. Pitch to him. Another curveball is outside knee high for ball two. Two balls, one strike on Larry Doby. One out to the Indians here in the last half of the first inning. Al Smith, the leadoff man, walked with sacrifice by Bobby Avila down to second base. And he's in scoring position at second in this one nothing ball game favored the Giants. Tony Cuccinello waiting to wave some traffic by third. Yells up words of encouragement as Gomez pitches outside again to Doby for ball three. Three balls and one strike. Smith hanging pretty close to that second base. He doesn't want to be caught off. The Giants use the count play quite often. Pitcher will whirl around and uh, make the toss back there, waiting for the man designated to cover. And in the hopes that he does. Time is called as Larry Doby steps away from the plate, and Gomez, about ready to pitch, has to break back off the mound. Now he's set. Smith takes his lead and comes to pitch. It's taken by Doby over on the outside corner for a called second. That's the second one. Three balls and two strikes. Well, we've got thousands of umpires in the stands here this afternoon. I can, I can tell you that for sure. Oh, everybody sees that pitch just a little bit differently. First of all, depends on which side you're rooting for, too. It's the payoff pitch now to Larry Doby, three and two. Gomez checks his runner at second, delivers a plate fastball. Doby swings, hits a high fly ball to short center field. Coming in is Willie Mays, says he has it. And he has. So there's the second out. Doby flying out to Willie Mays in center. Smith holds on at second, and here is Victor Wirtz. Victor Wirtz carrying the highest batting percentages of anybody on the field right now. For Cleveland in this series, Vic Wirtz obtained from the Baltimore Orioles about the middle of the uh, summer. That's five for eight including uh, extra base blows, and he is batting right this minute at 6.25 in World Series play. Big fellow from York, Pennsylvania, hit from left-handed. Prematurely bald guy. Steps up to the plate. He's got pretty good-sized wrists and forearms. Hit from left-handed, stands uh, almost straight away to the pitcher. The outfield comes around slightly to right, particularly right field of Don Mueller playing deep in right field. Off the hip for ball one. Last half the first inning. Cleveland has the tying run on its second. Two down. Victor works up there. In comes the pitch. Again, works back off one inside. That's ball two. Leo DeRosa must uh, really be masterminding the Giants right down to the nap heel because uh, Westrom keeps checking in for the Giants dugout. To DeRosa to make sure what he wants called. Gomez delivers a knuckler that swung on him at the first strike. Gomez will flash that knuckler at you every once in a while. And I notice he throws a sidearm pitch, much in the manner of uh, Larry Jansen, who is now on the coaching staff. You know, Larry was taken off of the uh, active staff. He's now coach, but they tell me he's going to make a comeback for next year. He's been working with these pitchers. And uh, one of the, in one of the pitches, Gomez sort of emulates. The old guy from Forest Grove. The 2-1 delivery. There's the knuckler again. It's outside. Three balls and one strike. Count on Victor Wirth. So for a moment, I felt a drop of rain. This was my imagination. Three balls, one strike. to Count on Victor Wirth. Smith is on his second in scoring position. The outfield around the right and deep. Gomez set. Comes in 3-1 with the fastball. Swing on and hit right on the line. The Alvin Dark at shortstop. Lines out the dark to short. No 
Now for Cleveland, their threat goes to the board. No runs. There were no base hits. There were no giant errors, and Cleveland has now left their 27th man on, the first one here this afternoon. Of all these uh, players on the field this afternoon, one guy stands out in my mind. I wanted to pitch the magnificent ball game yesterday for five innings before he was dented. And I went down to the locker room and ran into early wind in that locker room, and he was shaving yesterday. He's a fine guy, just as fine as you ever hope to meet, and he's a real rooter for Gillette. He told me, sure, I use the Gillette razor, Al. There's nothing like it. A quick shave puts me back in form after a tough workout. Early uses that easy shaving one-piece Gillette I've been telling you about, remember? You'll get the Gillette World Series record book with it, please. Now we move into the second inning here at Cleveland. The first man up for the New York Giants will be Williams starting the last third of their batting order. Williams to be followed by West Weston, and then will come Ruben Gomez as Mike Garcia goes back to the mound. Mike Garcia from Visalia, California. Big likable right-hander, working with his battery mate Jim Hegan. David Williams batting in the series at 0 0 0. He's 0 for 7. He's coming up. The wearer of number 10. David stands uh, about three quarters deep at the plate. Feet wide, spread apart, slightly open stance down towards third. The Jesse comes up to play shallow at third base. The outfield fans around to the left for Davey. And all hands are ready to go. One to nothing in favor of the Giants here over the Indians at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland in the third game of the 1954 World Series. Garcia is ready. Throws an overhand curveball. Does try. That's ball one. Garcia will give you a lot of that big motion and show you that slow stuff sometimes. This is best pitch. It's probably the slider in the fastball. There's the fastball. It's under the knees. Two balls, no strikes. The count on Davey Williams. Western on deck to go next. Herman Franks is your coach for the Giants down behind third. At first, it's Freddie Fitzsimmons. Boy, that's Freddie really was a pitcher in his day, wasn't he? Great goodness, I remember him many times. Pitch, a fastball. Fired through at the knees for a called strike. And the count is two and one now on Williams. Hagan down to pump the sign. Garcia leans forward to take it. And the pitch now to Davy Williams. Garcia overhand fastball. It's just low and outside. That's ball three. Three balls and one strike. Outfield isn't playing as deep for Davy Williams as they would uh, play, say, for a guy like Weston. Williams don't hit that long ball too often. Fastball to him is fired across the knees. An overhand fastball to run the count three and two. Williams moves that stick back and forth rather nervously. Garcia seems to uh, operate the same whether he's ahead or behind. Delivers 3 2, the fastball inside off the knees for ball four. So Williams walks for his first time this afternoon and the first time in the World Series. That's the second base on balls given up by Garcia. And the batter is West Westrum. West has two base hits for six at bat. And his percentage for World Series play this year is 333. Right hand hitter with a slightly open stance down towards third. He sort of catty corners across the batter spot. Works up somewhat on the handle. Walks up on the first pitch and takes it under the knees for ball one. Davey Williams opens the second inning by getting a walk here for the New York Giants. He's on the first base. Bickworth holds the inside corner. Garcia taking plenty of time. Texas runner Williams at first delivers the plate. An overhand fastball is through there for a strike right off the pitch. Weston just shook his head. Is it to say he didn't quite think so? He looked around out of Herman Franks to pick up the sign. Thing relayed from the bench. Williams has that sign. He's already been informed as to what it might be from uh, Freddie Fitzsimmons. Count is one ball, one strike on Weston. Garcia settles down. Deals it off, and Weston, trying to bunt the ball, misses it completely. The ball gets away from Hegan. There goes the Williams down to second base. So we'll know in a minute whether it's going to be a wild pitch or a pass ball. It's a wild pitch. So we have a wild pitch moving David Williams down to second base. Charge the wild pitch to Garcia. So David Williams now is in scoring position. Oh, 
Dorsey and Majeskin are talking things over. Wynn had a wild pitch yesterday, if you recall, and Lemon had one the first day. So all three of the Cleveland pitchers have come up with a wild pitch now in one of the series games. West Westerman to play with a count of two balls, one strike. David Williams now in scoring position. One to nothing in favor of the New York Giants. They scored in the top of the first inning. Garcia pitches. Westerman tries to bunt this one and fouls it off to the right of the plate. So they're trying to get Williams over to third to score him on that sacrifice fly. If no other way. But Westerman now has a count of strike two, so the big danger of the bunt goes to the board. Two balls, two strikes, a count on Westerman. Chris Weston's a very determined guy. Very hard-working guy. They call him the bulldog behind the plate. I guess he is in a way. He sort of sticks in there all the time and hangs on. First, he's ready to pitch to him, two and two. He does. The one and a miss for strike three. Well, Gomez fed him that fastball and got him. That's the second strikeout for Garcia. And Ruben Gomez, a pretty fair hit the pitcher, comes up to the plate. West Western from Clearbrook, Minnesota. Now living in Hyde Park, New York, strides back. The giant dug out down the third base line, sit down. Ruben Gomez coming up to the plate. Ruben Gomez hits him right handed just as he pitched him. The good reporter, he's so right handed. He has an overly closed stance, left foot forward to the plate, tall and slender. If memory serves me rightly, Ruben Gomez hit a home run this year for the Giants. And please remember that stick from memory. Swings on the first pitch and doesn't get it. Right there, Reeves is pouring that fastball in there. Davy Williams still on there at second base. One out here in the eighth off the second inning. Giants leading one to nothing. Garcia works again, takes something off the fastball, and misses with a blown outside to Gomez. His count is one ball, one strike with him now. On back to go next is the giant leadoff man, first baseman Whitey Lockman. He started everything off here in this ball game with a fine drive single in the right center. Garcia again a check of the runner at second. That's Davey Williams. Looks down at Gomez. Then delivers to him an overhand fastball. Gomez pounds it into center field. Larry Doby off to his left gets under. Takes the line drive. Hurriedly whips that ball in, and David Williams has to hold on at second. Gomez hit the ball well, all right, but lined it right to Larry Doby. We have the second out here in the top half of any number two. Whitey Luckman moves in. The old Carolina Comet. He's one of the most quiet guys you'll meet in a long time. Whitey Luckman. He and Don Muir, I think if you put them in a room all by themselves, they probably wouldn't have uh, 50 words of conversation in 24 hours. Mike Garcia, ready to pitch to Whitey Lockman. Only thing Whitey gets uh, hopping mad twice on uh, the playing field, and Don Mueller only one time. Always steady performance, both of them. Now Garcia gets set. Takes his time from Hagen after shaking one off. He's ready, looks at Williams at second. Hesitates, and then breaks back off the mound and chases Williams back into second. Majeski is playing shallow at third base. Down comes the pitch to the plate now to... Lockman slow. Count is one ball and no strike. I can imagine it's really something for uh, Hank Pajeski to be down there playing a third base in the World Series. As he's been a utility man for uh, several years, he probably figures this is uh, a real opportunity. A renaissance, so to speak. I see the livers. The fastball is over to the knees. One ball and one strike now is the count on Whitey Lockman. He's taking plenty of time. He can do it. Two outs, one on. Williams at second. He was walked and was wild pitched to second. 
Darcy trying to get out of his trouble here with the Giants leading one to nothing. Torber is... Luckman swings and beats one foul. And while we have a new ball going in play, let's pause and check the station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WGN Chicago, your exclusive World Series station. Right back to the business at hand here at Cleveland. It's Mike Garcia pitching to Whitey Luckman with a count of one ball and two strikes. And down in the Cleveland bullpen, Art Haldeman. Right hand there warming up for Cleveland, just in case Garcia should have any more trouble here in inning number two. Mike has been touched for one run and two hits. All of that coming in the first inning. One error behind him, of course, did not help him. The run, incidentally, is unearned in case you tuned in late. Garcia is ready. Delivers a curveball. Swung on by Lockman and dribbled up the first baseline where Vic Worth picked it up. One ball and two strikes. Down on Whitey Lockman. Hanging around, hoping to get a chance to hit in the innings, Alvin Dark. Cleveland infield, the victim works at first. Bobby Avila at second, George Strickland at short, and Hank Majeski at third. Stockman choking up on the handle of the bat, standing away from the plate with an open stance slightly down toward first. Out there playing him as a punch hitter in the left field. They're not even playing him straight away. Big hole in the outfield's in right center. Brought to daylight, too. Down the right field line. Garcia delivers. Whitey Luckman swings and cuts his foul. Back to the screen. One ball, two strikes on Whitey. David Williams. And out of second base there so long, he's about to grow root. Cuts down now, takes his lead. Garcia keeps checking back there to make sure Whitey... I'll make sure David Williams is not taking too much of a lead. Now he delivers the plate to Whitey Lockman. Swung on. There's a high fly ball hung along the right field line. It could be trouble if it's in there, but Avila goes back and sits over in foul chair, so he takes that ball and stumbles and turns on the center track and goes down. He's all right. A very, very nice play by Bobby Avila. In foul territory, steps across the line, deep behind first base. Well, made a great play out of that one. So Whitey Lockman is out, fouling out to the second baseman, Bobby Avila. For the Giants. No runs, no hits. No errors. One man was left on. A round of applause for Bobby Avila as he comes off the playing field. He richly deserves it. Another score at the end of one and a half innings of play is New York one and Cleveland nothing. My opponent is no good. <laughs> My opponent can't even count. <laughs> You're wrong. I'm right. <laughs> Although we argue politics, on one thing we're agreed. Sports make your better looking shade. It's the last to proceed. My friend, you change blade, one, two, three, and fast, quick days you get. Plus, double edged economy. The people start to let to look sharp. When you change the world to feel sharp, on the fall it just be sharp. If your winter's up with the modicum and super speed, your head is free. Well, don't forget, friends, the valuable Gillette World Series record book is included free when you buy a Gillette Super Speed Racer. Now, Hank Majewski. He was used as a pinch batter over in New York. And Hank Majewski's 0 for 1. So he's coming up for his second time in World Series play. Hank Majewski batting right-handed. He's a little fellow, very struggly put together, heavy set through the leg. Pretty good-sized chest on him. Gomez tries the fastball on him and misses with it outside. Low for ball one. He gets away from Western, shoots back to the screen. Majewski came on as a pinch batter in the ninth inning, the first game of the World Series, and uh, didn't even get a chance to get up to the plate. Mitchell came in to bat for him when uh, Dorsa pulled some strategy and shifted pitches from Little to Griffin. The next pitch is over the low and the count is ball two on the jet team. Two balls, no strike. Gomez, side arm fastball, flails the two there to knees for a strike. 
Two balls and one strike on Hank Pateski. I can guarantee you that should the Cleveland Indians pop up with anything in this ball game this afternoon, this crowd, and there's a good one here, will really tear the place down. The Giants have won a pair, and the Indians are trying to dent it. There's a curveball to Majeski. Good at the knees for a all strike. Two balls, two strikes on Hank Majeski. He's the number five hitter in the Cleveland order, coming up for his first time in the ball game, leading off here in the second inning. Giants leading one to nothing. Gomez set, delivers 2 2, a sidearm curveball, swung on and bounced foul down to Tony Cuccinello, coaching behind third. Slips it over to Gomez. Probably you can hear in the background the rattle of the telegraph keys, sending the description of this ball game to parts of the world where radio probably has uh, not been able to get to. And uh, that would be very small, I think, because heaven knows uh, this one's going all over the place. Fastball is swung on by Majeski. There's a high puck foul off the first baseline. Why do you when he gets over under it? Makes a catch, and Majeski is out. That brings on Dave Silly. Dave Silly is looking for his first World Series hit. He's 0 for 4. The switch hitter from Paris, Texas, will be batting left handed against Ruben Gomez. He's been quite a defensive man for Cleveland this year. Dave Silly. Obtained from the Philadelphia Athletics by the Cleveland Indians. Gomez ready to work to him. Delivers a sidearm curve. It stays outside about shoulder high. Gomez will throw you the school ball every now and then, and he works it uh, particularly to left-hand hitters. Looks like uh, that's what that might have been. Comes down again with an overhand fastball, and misses with it again. That's ball two. Low and outside. Two balls, no strike. One out, nobody on, last half of the second inning. Cleveland up at bat and trailing one to nothing. Gomez, sort of a spindly leg guy, standing out on the mound, leaning forward, taking his time from Western. Pump goes to the top of the pump, comes down with a curveball that Philly strides into and takes shoulder high for ball three. Three balls, no strike. Continues to be dark and overcast here at Cleveland. Now the 3 0 delivery. A fastball inside for ball four. So Philly picks up the second walk given up by Gomez. Here is George Strickland. George Strickland in the World Series has gone 0 for 6. So he has no batting percentage. George has been a victim of strikeouts twice. He has a completely closed stance and bats right-handed. Tall thin fella from New Orleans, Louisiana. Gomez checks his runner, the tying, the potential tying run for Cleveland at first in Dave Philly. Then uh, wheels the pitch into the plate. Strickland takes it over for a strike. No balls, one strike. You count on George Strickland. One out, one on here in the last half of the second inning. These Cleveland Indians are grim and determined this afternoon. This is a game they've got to win. Curveball to Strickland is under the knees. Count as one ball and one strike. Gomez bouncing that ball around in his mitt. Steps up, puts his foot on the rubber. Looks around the infield mass field and then tears down to his batter, George Strickland. Dave Philly takes his lead at first base. Whitey Lockman inside on the corner. The pitch is swung on by Strickland and Mitt. Gomez came in with a sidearm medium speed pitch. He throws a lot of his stuff three-quarter overhand and some of it sidearm. Very rarely does he go completely overhand with his pitch. One ball and two strikes. Wouldn't be a bit surprised that Gomez said he might do this thing in this afternoon. There's an overhand pitch outside. Three-quarter overhand. Ruben Gomez daddy is the pitcher. I understand down in Puerto Rico. Two balls, two strikes is the count here on George Strickland, the wearer of number two. Two and two. Dave Philly, ready to run on anything, takes his plate at first base and strides off a couple of steps. Gomez, two twos the plate, curveball, swung on and found it right back to the mound. Gomez is high off the mound, takes the ball, throws to Davey Williams for the out. The field of first base is not in time. But Gomez came off that mound like a small kitten. Bounced high on that ball, made the throw back to second base to Davey Williams. He was taken out of that play very nicely by Davey Williams, but he got it by uh, Dave Philly, but he got his throw off anyway. Jim Higgins in the 
Watson. Two down for Cleveland in the second. George Strickland, the runner at first base, and Jim Hagan, batting at 125, is coming up to the plate. Jim has had one base hit. A double, he hit into left center field. That was in the second inning of yesterday's ball game. He was sacrificed down to third, but died there in that second inning. Jim Hagan, right-hand batter. Massachusetts boy leaning over the plate. Takes Gomez fastball outside to ball one. Those fast pitches with this gray overcast here today are going to look even uh, faster. George Strickland takes the lead now at first. Two down here in the second. Pitch to Higgin is a low curveball under the knees. That's ball two. Jim Higgin has struck out just one time in the series. He's caught uh, for Cleveland all through the series with the exception of the time he was lifted and uh, Mickey Gresso in the first game came on to catch an inning. Two balls, no strikes on Higgin. Right-hand batter. Side on curveball. Higgin goes a little bit too far around trying to check himself and it's called against him for strike one. Cleveland has come up with a pitching here in this World Series, but the highly vaunted bats of the Cleveland Indians have been, uh, in a way, rather silent. So that might be the answer to uh, the edge the Giants now have. Gomez ready with the 2-1 delivery to Hegan. Wheels it up there, and Hegan swings on it, sends a bounding ball down the third baseline foul. Two balls and two strikes to count on Jim Hegan. Two outs, one on, last half of the second inning, score one to nothing in favor of the New York Giants. It was figured by most of the experts that Cleveland had a pretty good opportunity to win this ball game this afternoon. Going with Mike Garcia, a pretty good fastballer. And they still have a lot of time to uh, win this ball game. We're just in the last half of the second inning. Two down for Cleveland, one on the tying run at first. Gomez, pretty tough by right hander in his own right. Delivers, three quarter overhand pitch is outside and low. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Now George Strickland will be off and moving towards second base when uh, Gomez fires away to Higgins. Strickland about to step off and take his lead. Gomez goes to the top of the stretch, hesitates, and quickly throws over to first. That is, his motion was quick, but his toss was easy because Strickland uh, hadn't wandered away too far. Count remains three and two on Higgins as he digs in at the plate. Now Gomez sets, delivers, there goes the runner, the pitch is swung on and foul back to the screen off to our right. Lands right up into the television booth off to our right. Our good friend Jack Brickhouse and Russ Hodges are working. Out remains three and two on Jim Higgin. Gomez sets, gets ready. Checks George Strickland. Down comes the pitch, there goes Strickland. The ball is swung on. Hit down to third, deep behind third. Thompson comes up with the throws into the dirt at first, but Whitey Lockman comes up with it, and Hegan is out. So that retires the side. Lockman digging out Thompson's low throw at first base. And here in the second inning, again, the Cleveland Indians have a tying run on. Cannot capitalize. No runs, there were no base hits. There were no errors, and one man was left on. So right here at the end of two full innings of play, it's New York one and Cleveland nothing. And a ball game that promises to give us just as many thrills as we have had in the first two that were played over at the Polo Grounds in New York City. And while Mike Garcia comes out there, just get ready for inning number three, I'd just like to switch over here to my sidekick, Jimmy Dudley, and see what his comments in the first two innings might possibly be. Jimmy, how about that? What do you think? Well, I'm getting a great deal of pleasure out of watching this Ruben Gomez uh, work. This is the first time that we've actually seen him in tough competition. And I'm telling you, that screw ball that he has really has the boys up there baffled. They don't know exactly what they're swinging for. And so far, he's been master of the situation. But the game is uh, sort of moving along just like the first two. Uh, the Giants broke on top. And it's one of those days when you sort of figure that the Indians must have the break coming, coming somewhere else. Well, all that jam that we can expect this afternoon as it wears on to see both of these fellows, Gomez and Garcia, find that fastball right up uh, until uh, the last minute. And one thing we can uh, caution you to be watching for as far as Gomez is concerned, as the afternoon goes on, he'll come in more and more sidearm with his pitches. Mike Garcia, of course, uh, the big fan of his fastball pitching is of the overhand variety. 
Now let's see what he's going to do here with the Giants in the top half of the third inning. He's behind one to nothing as the Giants lead by that margin. Alvin Dark is the batsman who struck out the first inning. He'll be followed by Don Mueller and then by Willie May. Mike Garcia, big right-hander, delivers an overhand fastball. Dark swings on it, loops it out into left center field. That's going to be in there for the base hit. Coming over is Dolby to pick it up on the first skip and fire it into George Strickland. So Dark opens with a single into left center. That'll get him his first hit this afternoon, giving his fourth World Series hit. And that's hit number three off Garcia. So Alvin Dark first. Got Don Mueller. Who forced out Waddy Lockman at second, and he himself... Went on to second when uh, George Strickland committed the only Cleveland error in the series by throwing wild at first base. Down comes the pitcher to run a break. Pitcher swung on and hit through the hole between short and third and out into left field. There goes Alvin Dark all the way around the third. Don Mueller hitting through the left side of the infield. Into left for a single. Four bounding ball that died about halfway out into left field. And by the time Smith got it, was able to make the throw in Alvin Dark. Running on the blow has moved all the way into third base. So now Garcia is in trouble again. That's the fourth hit given up by Mike. That's the third hit Mueller has picked up in the series. He's going to bat 11 times. Willie Mays has one base hit for one time up today, and as he's standing in, runners at first and third. Majeski playing just off third, works on the inside corner on Mueller at first, and the second base combination playing a double play death. Pitch is swung on by Mays as they drive down to third to Majeski. He's got the ball, fires it into Higgins. They've got Alvin Dark and Horsey between home and third. There is Keegan tagging him out. And while the horse is going on for the tag out, the runners moved on down to second and third. So Mueller has moved in to third base on the fielder's choice. Willie Mays gets all the way down to second. And the play went from Majeski, third baseman, to Higgin. Back to Majeski and back to Higgin. Finally made the tag on Alvin Dark. So we have one out here in the top of the third inning. Runners at second and third. And the batter coming up now is Thompson. Alvin Dark caught in the rundown. Hank Pajeski's first opportunity. The infield pulls up tight now. And Hank Thompson on there is going to be out. The play is going to be put on intentionally. They're not going to monkey around with him at all. They're going to put him on and set it up for a possible chance for a double play. is ball three. Now ball four. So Thompson is intentionally walked. That'll be the third base on balls given up by Garcia. He's standing out there at second base. Now Barlick, you know fans of second base umpire, is standing in fair territory. And that raises a question. If a batted ball strikes him before reaching a fielder, is the hitter safe or out? Well, you'll find the answer in the Gillette World Series record book. To get a copy free, just buy the new one-piece Gillette razor at the regular price. Well, fans, here's the guy that's been giving uh, the Sweden Indian fit. Dusty Rhodes, who's hammered two home runs in World Series play for the New York Giants. He's signing for Monty Irvin with a bases loaded, one out here in the top half of the third inning. Dusty Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S. He'll probably stay in the ball game to play in... Uh, the field. Garcia delivers to him. Rhodes swings and it's a base hit to right field. In comes John Mueller to score the second run. Right behind him comes charge with Willie Mays. Thompson moves over to third. Well, there are two more runs batted in. Dusty Rhodes batting here in the third inning. Let's check up on this guy Rhodes. He's still batting a thousand. That gives him four hits for four at bats. He has now batted in seven runs. Batted in seven runs for the New York Giants. Yet still here this afternoon. Hit number five, runs two and three up Garcia. And he now ties Dr. Bobby Brown, who held the record as a pinch batter in the World Series. In three hits, now Dusty Rhodes has three pinch hits in the World Series. Up to the plate is Davey Williams, taking the first pitch over for a cold strike. Rhodes is swinging to the right field, moving Thompson around to third and throwing a pair. So it's 3 nothing in favor of the Giants over Cleveland. Does here deliver, and Davey Williams snaps his head back and takes the fastball. It's the 10 point for ball one. And so what was it uh, they said this morning about Dusty Rhodes? You give him an inch, you take a mile. And boy, he's taking a mile against Cleveland this year. 
Start there, ready. Television overhand fastball with the runner breaking from third. The squeeze is on, and the run scores. There is a throw to first base. It's not in time. Not in time to Victor Wood. So the Jazz squeeze in that fourth run. It's now four to nothing. And the official scores are talking over the situation now, whether it's going to be a base hit or not, we'll know in a moment. Gasser is going to be charged with an error for holding that ball too long. So it's going to be a sacrifice for Williams on an error on Garcia. But the run has been squeezed in. Up at the plate is Watson. Pitch time is over first strike. Garcia's next delivery. Evens the count at one and one. Rhodes on that squeeze play. Sacrifice, which was the squeeze play. Move to second. The pitch to Weston. Low for ball two. Two balls and one strike. So the Giants have sort of broken out in a rash here in the third inning. Taking up three runs to go out in front for nothing. Starts here. Checks his runner. Flares back, delivers to Weston, who hits the ball back to the mound. Garcia has it close to first base to work for the out as the runners advance. Now Williams moves down to second. Dusty Rhodes, who batted here in the third inning for Marty Irvin, singled in a pair of runs, has now moved down on the infield out, third base. Two out, two on. The Giants have runners in scoring positions, second and third. The batter coming up is Ruben Gomez. Probably feels a great deal better about the situation. Down the bullpen for Cleveland, Art Houdeman. Back up and throwing again. Garcia wheels the pitch in there and Gomez swings on it and doesn't get it. The last minute he tried to check himself, but he'd gone too far. Rhodes, who batted for Urban, is on at third base. Williams, the second base runner, first is open. Garcia delivers a lot of curve. Taken. Right up high at the peak of the cap, runs his count to one and one. Just looking through the record book here. Gehrig has uh, nine runs batted in, according to the Gillette World Series record book, to uh, lead in single series. Rhodes now has seven. Gomez swings on the next pitch and fouls it down the first base line, way back into the crowd. So all this guy rode to third base has to do to tie Gehrig's record in the way of Brent's batted in the single series and pick up a pair now. He's got uh, maybe the rest of today. It all depends on what DeRoche is going to do, whether he's going to allow a road to stay in left or not. He's got today and tomorrow to do it, for sure. And if Cleveland could come back and win this one, we'll go more than that. The pitch to plate to is over for a call strike three. Well, so that's all. Eight men come to bat here for... New York, the third inning. Gomez gets the third, or uh, Garcia gets the third strike out. Gomez, the victim. And in the third inning, three big runs for the New York Giants. Picked up on one, two, three base hits. There was one error, and there were two men left on. So the score here at the end of two and a half innings of play, the New York Giants four, and the Cleveland Indians nothing. Well, Alvin Dark certainly have been uh, sparking this ball out as far as the Giants are concerned on the inner defense. And Alvin not only goes all out in baseball, but Alvin Dark goes all out on what a clean, brisk Gillette Cave does for a fellow when he's pushed. Alvin, and by the way, this goes for Lou Boudreau, Rob Feller, and Charlie Grimm. Alvin says that a quick, clean shave with today's Gillette Super Speed Razor is a real break. How about doing a real big thing for yourself? Get a Gillette Super Speed Razor and discover how much of a lift a smooth, refreshing shave can give you. The Super Speed is precision made all in one piece. There's nothing to take apart. You change blades or reach a clean in seconds. 
Why did you let Super Speed Racers set? One dollar. Attached free is the pocket size, 112 page Gillette World Series record book. As we had expected, Dusty Rhodes goes into left field now for the New York Giants, playing left in the last half of third, and Bob Lemon comes up to bat for Mike Garcia. Bob Lemon, the pitcher, hit from left-handed. Gomez feeds him the fastball, and it's taken over to knees for called strike. So Garcia is all through here after having six three innings, in which he gave up four runs, five hits, walked three, struck out three, and wild pitched one time. The hits the play taken by Lemon, and the hit is strike two call. Time is called for the second while uh, Weston goes out, talks to Gomez. Uh, actually, he just goes out and turns the plate and yells something up to him. Bob Lemon, who we told you on several occasions, has been used as a pinch batter, although he is a pitcher. Swings on his foot to miss his far strike three. So that's all for Bob Lemon as he goes down, pinch batting for Garcia here in the third inning. And before we have Smith, the top of the batting order coming up for Cleveland, let's pause him for the station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WGM, the Chicago Tribune Station, your exclusive World Series station. <laughs> Ruben Gomez ready now to deliver to Smith. The first pitch to him is a press fire, low and outside for ball one. One out for Cleveland, last half the third, the score is 4 0 in favor of the Giants. They scored one in the first inning, three in a big third, in which they sent eight men to the plate. Gomez delivers, pitch is swung on, and hits right back on the line to the pitcher. Gomez holds it for out number two. Two down, last half of the third, as the Giants continue to handcuff the Cleveland Indians. Marty Avila, who sacrificed successfully in the first inning, coming up now for his first official at bat of the afternoon. Gomez, who has been old man tough here this afternoon, he's been ice water personified. It's ready to pitch to Bobby Avila. Down comes that first pitch, and Avila takes the sweeper across the corner on the outside of the Budway Tire for strike one. Mike Garcia, in going three innings here this afternoon against the Giants, used exactly 61 pitches. Gomez uses one up on a curveball inside to Avila. Down is one ball, one strike on him. Avila wearing number one. Four to nothing to score in favor of the Giants. Gomez ready, delivers 1-1, one, one, a side-arm fastball at Mrs. Lowen outside, and the Villa's count moves off to 2-1. One. Villa back in to take his chance. Gomez sets. Ruben fires away. There's that side-arm fastball. It's over. First strike, and that's the second one. That's a pretty rough hit to look at. Gomez throws it pretty well. When he's right, guy Gomez is right, he's pretty tough. Archer has seen him come out this year, too, and get clobbered on occasion. Now, I guess what happens to any pitchers? Small is right. Avila, after the next pitch, bounds one down the third baseline foul. Two balls and two strikes. Last half of only number three. Two outs, nobody on for Cleveland. They've left two men on. They left on one in the first inning by virtue of a walk and one in the second. He got on as a walk. Gomez delivers fastball, swung on and hit down to third. Thompson waits for it, picked up now, hurries to throw to first, and Avila is out for one strike. So Avila grounds out from third to first. Thompson to Lockman to retire the side. And for Cleveland in the third inning, nothing is wrong. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. At the end of the third inning, the score is New York four and Cleveland nothing. In convenient dispensers with used blade compartments, Gillette Blue Blades are 20 for 98 cents, 10 for 49 cents. Now the business of inning number four here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland for the New York Giants' early lead-off man, Whitey Lockman, due to come up there 
He'll be followed by the number two hitter, Alvin Dark, and then by Don Miller. Larry Larson comes up, and the new pitcher for the Cleveland Indians will be Art Houtelman. Art Houtelman relieving for Cleveland. Ready for the first pitch by Art Houtelman to Whitey Lockman. Art pumps right. Chris throws an overhand curve. Let up Ratty and it's inside for ball one. Art Houtelman picking off for the Cleveland Indians. Young fellow born in Detroit, Michigan, now lives in Birmingham, Michigan. Throws the fastball, and this is with that. That's ball two. Two balls, no strike. Strike, twist, throws, an overhand fastball, and lays it through there to Whitey Lockman for a strike. Down to two and one. Or right, takes the sign again from Hagan. Bears down on the next pitch and swung on as the bounding ball hit the shortstop. Stickman has it off to his right, up close, first base, and Whitey Lockman is out. Alvin Dark. Alvin gets ready to face him now. Hart this year won 15 and lost 7 in the pairing 32 games. He curves Dark and gets it over to me for a strike. Dark stands in late. Hardeman comes in with a big curveball. It drives Dark back from the plate. Slips in off the short rib. One ball, one strike. Down on the giant captain. Dark this afternoon has one for two. He struck out the first inning. Hit a single to left center field. The lead off the third. The third in which the Giants scored three times. Fastball to Dark swung on. There's a fly ball to right field. Getting under the silly on the first team chance and breaks it for out number two. Two down, nobody on top of the fourth for the Giants. And with the bases empty, Don Mueller comes up. He won't be able to do any damage this time as far as driving men uh, from first to third on the single to left. Pitch to ends a fastball inside off the knees. Don just put a jackknife back in place to keep him being hit. One ball, no strike. Don choking up on the wood. Hardeman with that gangly pumping most of his delivers, and the pitch is outside. Two balls, no strike. Four to nothing in favor of the Giants. They scored one in the first, three in the third. The lead four nothing as we move along here in the top of the fourth. Hardeman delivers two nothing. Mueller swings and gets just enough of it to tip it foul. Two and one. Now little patches of blue try to peek through the overcast. We might uh, get by without rain here this afternoon. Set. An overhand fastball punched by Don Muir. Out by second base on a high pop-up. Bobby Avila coming on under it. He's got it. So well, that's all here for the Giants. And to the crowd. Drawing as they're pleased with the fact that the Giants put down a one 2 3 order for the first time this afternoon with nothing to saw. And the four at the end of three and one half innings of play remains New York four and Cleveland nothing. If you're starting 21 or have just passed that point, drive with me a moment, will you? While I have a word about shaving with the younger guy. What I want to get across is this. Far and away, the great majority of men start with Gillette and rely on the Gillette razor to make the job of shaving as quick, easy, and comfortable as can be. And the reason is as simple as all this. Day in and day out, only Gillette can give them shaves that feel so good and look so good or last so long. You'll go along with this, that's the best, when you try the Gillette Super Speed Razor. It's a whale of a value at only one dollar, complete with blue blade dispenser and handy traveling case. And remember, you get the World Series record book with it, free. 
In the last half of the fourth inning here, Larry Doby strolls up to the place with Cleveland to face Ruben Gomez. Ruben, like uh, early win yesterday, has been just about as tough as anyone could imagine a pitcher to be. If you recall, it was uh, early win pitching for Cleveland yesterday. Promoted the Giants down in, with surprising rapidity until he ran into a pitch ball in the fifth inning. And let's see what's going to happen with Gomez as he steps in for the fourth inning to pitch to Larry Doby. Doby, who has gone over one for the fly ball to center field. Gomez throws him the fastball, and Doby takes it high. That's ball one. That's where a ball game can turn right around in the twinkling of an eye. Gomez set delivers. Doby swings on the slow curve and doesn't get it. That's strike one. One ball and one strike. Gomez had him completely full on the screw ball. Now the one one pitch. There's the fastball. Swung on by Doby. Loops out of the left field. That's going to drop in there for the first base hit off Gomez. Doby is on. Rhodes comes in, fires that ball back in. Well, Doby opens the fourth with a single to left field. Mr. Woods gets a round of applause. The first base hit comes off Gomez here in the fourth. First base hit off early win came yesterday by the Giants in the fifth inning. So it may be that the call has gone out just one inning early. Run on the minutes, four to nothing ball game in favor of New York. Cleveland trying to battle their way back. They know this has got to be the game. Mr. Woods the batter. Woods came up in the first inning and retired the side by hitting a short line drive to shortstop to Alvin Dart. Gomez checks his runner at first, delivers the plate. Woods takes the screw ball outside for ball one. Getting appreciably lighter here at Cleveland, but it continues to do so. Run nothing delivery. Her ball looks like another screw ball, and that's low on outside. Mr. Woods count two balls and a strike. The outfield playing just about straight away for Woods, and they're playing him deep. Who wouldn't after he drove Willie Mays to a most surprising catch at the Polo Grounds in the first game of the series? It's a swung on by Woods, and it's for strike one. Two balls, one strike on Victor Woods. The wearer of number 23. He's trying to drive a bat handle off now as he steps up to the plate. Measures the bat off on the rubber of home plate. Takes the preliminary swing, puts the bat up on his shoulder. Gomez sets now and delivers to him. High inside curveball. That's ball three. Three and one, the count on Victor Worth. Four to nothing to count in the ball game in favor of the Giants. They walked right out and got one in the first inning and then, uh, added three more in the third to lead four nothing. Cleveland getting their first hit here in the fourth inning. Pitch to the plate, the work is over. A fastball with the knees for strike two call. Three balls, two strikes on Victor Wirtz. The runner at first base is Larry Doby. He's going to handle Rupert out in left field. He's on. It wasn't a solidly hit ball. It was just sort of loose out there. Down comes the pitch three two. It's swung on. There's a bounding ball hit down to David Williams. He goes back to Dark for one out of second to throw the first not in time. So Doby is a race on the fourth out at second base. From second base from Williams to shortstop Alvin Dark. Victor Woods out legging the throw to first base is on at first. With one down here in the last half of the fourth inning. The batter is Hank Majeski. He's gone over one today. He's over two in the series. Despite the fact he didn't get a chance to swing one time. First time he came up to the plate, he was there immediately for a pinch batter. One out, one on. Last half of the fourth. Frank Majeski, wearing number five, steps up to the plate. Right-hand hitter. Stands his feet pretty much together. Takes the first pitch over for strike one call. Ruben Gomez throwing that three-quarter side-arm fastball. I'll field around the left and deep. We'll just even hit that long one for you. There's a lot of power in those wrists and forearms of his. Struck a little fella. Gomez curveball. is pounded foul down the third baseline. 
The ball, two strikes. Jocko Cronin, left-handed umpire, steps out uh, behind the desk and whips that ball back to the mound. A new one back to the mound to Gomez. That's some combination of left-handed Irishman. Now the 0 2 pitch here on Hank Bajeski. Gomez eyes his runner, the works at first. Second and third open, one out. Down comes the pitch. Bajeski snaps his head back and takes a curve right off the point of the chin for a ball one. One ball and two strikes. Gomez, not in a bit of a hurry. So much time that Majeski steps away from the plate to get a double handful of dirt and dry his hands. Squeezes the neck end of the bat and he's ready to uh, step up there now. There he goes, moving into batting spot. Rick Work steps off at first. Lockman's not holding him on. Part way back to his depth. Pitch the plate swung on by Majeski. There's a two hopper hit the dark. He's up with it. Goes to Williams for one to throw the first. There's the first double play in the World Series. Mike Majeski wrapped into the first double play. 1954 World Series. It goes from Alvin Dark to David Williams to Whitey Lockman. Work got on the front end of the double play to retire the side here in the last half fourth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and there was no one left on. So the score at the end of four innings of play now is New York four and Cleveland nothing. Well, in these days of growing international tension, national defense is everybody's business. And what is more important than a strong defense against atomic attack by air? The Ground Observer Corps in the United States and Canada needs thousands of civilian volunteers to learn to spot and identify low-flying planes that cannot be picked up by radar. Your contribution will be only a few hours a week at an observation post or filter center near your home. The silver wings of the GOC will... Show your neighbors that you are playing a key role in your country's defense. Write or call your local civil defense center. In Canada, write to the Air Defense Command, St. Hubert, Quebec. Now for any number five. Willie Mays to lead off for the Giants. He has one for two. Had a single to right field in the first inning to get his first World Series base hit. Then comes Thompson, followed by Dusty Rhodes, who again has been the difference in the ball game. Our Cutterman delivers to Willie Mays and throws the crossfire across at the knees for a strike. Our Cutterman in relief of Mike Garcia. So it means that we have an entire new Cleveland, we have a new Cleveland battery. The pitch to the plate to Willie Mays is over, but low for ball one. One ball and one strike. Alderman pumps, kicks, and throws one run, a curveball. Willie Mays swings on it and hits a high fly ball to the light tower off the left field line. But a few minutes ago, the Cleveland has a new battery. That's right. When one man has changed, the battery is new. And Art Hotterman is the pitcher now. Mentioning the name of the word battery, you know, I've been using that term for years without knowing just how it began. And now I know because the answer is right there in the Gillette World Series book, along with the answers of other important baseball questions. Willie Mays after the next pitch with a high fly ball in the deep left center field. There goes Ray Doby back. He's still going back. He's under it. He makes the catch easily. Well, so Willie Mays is out. Doby taking care of that one. And Doby slides around out there in center field like Grease Lightning. Thompson is the batter now for New York. Hank Thompson hitting left handed. Giants have four runs right now on five base hits. Almost Garcia. That's committed no errors this afternoon. Slow curve ball by Hardeman is taken by left-handed batting Thompson outside for ball one. The Giants so far in this ball game have standed five men. Now runs a total of 17 for the series. Hardeman delivers the plate. Thompson takes the curve and it's over. One ball, one strike. One out, top of the fifth. No base runners for the Giants. They're leading here by the score four to nothing. Cleveland has no runs. On one base hit, they've committed a pair of errors. And that's down to two men. Thompson swings on the next pitch and loops it out into left center field. It's in there for the base hit. Doby comes in quickly to pick up. There goes Thompson. He's going to try for two. Doby still comes hurriedly in the trick on the slide. And Thompson's in there. So Thompson 
Gets a double end to left center field. That'll be hit number one off Art Haldeman, hit number six. That's the first extra base hit other than Dusty Rhodes' two home runs for the Giants. One out, one on here in the fifth inning. Dusty Rhodes coming up there, and here's going to walk him. So this time, Dusty, you're not going to park it for us. Dusty Rhodes is being given intentional base on ball. That'll be the first walk by Hardeman, the fourth walk picked up by the Giants here this afternoon. Dusty Rhodes, they respect his bat. They might not worry too much about him out in the field, but when he comes up there swinging that lumber, he's an old-time slugger, and they say, uh-uh. So he starts off first base now, and with um, one out, we have runners at second and first, and the batter is Davey Williams. Davey, who sacrificed successfully in the third inning, and there was Charles Garcia. When I say sacrifice successfully, please, uh, no, I mean the success of his sacrifice was it was a squeeze playing got the run in. Now we're ready for Hardeman's delivery. A fastball fired off the fist on the inside corner to David Williams for called strike. Hardeman shoved off the bases behind him, checked both runners. <laughs> Overhand fastball, swung on and hit loose the catch up. Christian digs it out, throws it to Avila for one to throw over the first base to lift it not in time. He comes up with a nice save, uh, throw it into the dirt. Well, they get one, Williams is the runner at first. Rhodes with the race going into second base. From Clifton to Avila. Top shot to the second baseman covering. And on fourth shot, Thompson goes right over to take the in third. So the Giants have runners at first and third now. Second is open and down. And the batter is West Westrun. Four to nothing ball game in favor of the New York Giants. And we move along here at the Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Third game of the World Series. The Giants have won two. Cleveland trying to win one here this afternoon. Art Hardeman in relief of Garcia. He's ready to deliver to Western. He dies, and West takes a pitch outside for ball one. Western this afternoon is struck out, and it's passed back to the mound. So he goes for two. He was knocking the cup for the ball in the first game of the series. Sent some rippers. Down to one and old delivery by Art Hardeman. He deals off the stretch, throws the fastball, and Western slams it into the pitch. They hit. In comes Thompson to score. Williams goes to second to hold on. Weston singles in the left. Drops a hit ground ball through the hole between short and third. Williams now the base runner and second base. Thompson comes for the fifth giant run. And it's hit number two and run number one off Hudderman. Now a four. Uh, now a five to nothing. Yeah, Save the Giants. They come up for a seventh base hit. The batter coming up to the plate now is Ruben Gomez. He lined the center field to lay the second inning. Came up against third and struck out. So Gomez comes up uh, now looking for him. First base hit. Here is. Lord Hardeman at first. And we have activity down the bullpen now. Uh, Cleveland in then. He had it. He was just striking for him. Lord Hardeman gets ready. Delivers to Gomez and sends a full bounding ball foul down the third base line. Ray Norlesky. Rookie left hander. Down the bullpen for Cleveland. Right in the pitch, not a good match. Williams is second, Weston is on at first. Four to six games, or eight runs batted in for the Giants. Had uh, five runs batted in his best set, 12, all told. Gomez can bat in another one, if Williams is on at first, scoring position. Adelman settles into his work and fast pass ball. It's outside, full of high for ball one. So that counts, one ball, one strike. Coming through the top of the stretch, looks at Gomez, delivers to him an overhand fastball, and pours it right through to me. That's strike two. Two balls, one strike. Ready to step out second. Pick his mate to go on. There's a bounding ball hit down the first place line just now. It's a hug the line. Went to the first place flag and kicked out before the bag. That was what is known as a snake hopper. 
We're going all over the place. Ed Williams, who's running on that one, has to move all the way back to second. Right back in the second inning. Williams is out there second. Finally, almost uh, did throw a route. Then the top of the fifth down. One run is in the third. Five to nothing for the giant. The runner's up to the second, two down. Gomez up and it's like a blow on his own behalf. Number 28 was for the pitch they made by Art Haldeman. One and two. And it rides an overhand fastball. Cup strike three. So that's all for Gomez. Twice now he has struck out. Twice he's ended the inning by strike out. And that's the first one here for Haldeman, the fourth. The Giants have run into the fast move. So for New York and the fifth inning, one run. On two base hits, there were no errors, and two men were left on. Seven men have been stranded here now by the Giants, going about a total of five times. And the fourth one, at the end of four and one half inning, the New York Giants five, and the Cleveland Indians nothing. All at one stop. The book is free, but you'd better hurry. It was a sellout last year, and the new and large position is going even faster. So now we're ready to step into the last half of the fifth inning and the completion of the ball game. And that means that our good friend Jimmy Dudley takes over right here in his own stomping ground. So, uh, Jimmy, we're ready to listen to you, Father. Thank you, Al. And here we go into the last half of the fifth inning. Dave Silly, the Indians right field and leading off of the tribe against Ruben, Ruben Gomez, who has been one whale of a pitcher thus far. The first pitch of the strike with a fastball hitting the outside corner in the eye. Silly, the first time up in the second inning, drew a base on ball. But the only hit given up by Gomez was a pop by single by Dolby. Next pitch is swung on the ground ball is passed. Davey Williams, then the right center for a base hit. Silly, coming through with the Indians' second hit of the day. He's on first with nobody out, and the batter is number two, George Strickland. Gomez has been a very solid pitcher. Just the second hit he has given up. He has struck out only one man, walked two, but has been command, in command of the situation throughout the entire game up to this point. Strickland, the right-hand batter, steps in. Swings on the first pitch and hits the fly ball into left field. Dusty Rhodes moves in under this one. Now he has it easily for out number one. Strickland, five to Dusty Rhodes in left field. One out. Runner on first and the batter is Jim Hegan, the Indian catcher. Ray now lets be again starts to work down on the Indian bullpen. There is a possibility that Hardeman may be lifted for a pinch hitter. The middle inning of the ball game, and Al Lopez would like to get something started with the Giants off to a solid five to nothing lead. Pitty takes the lead. First pitch to Hegan is a strike call with a curve getting the outside corner. Gomez is not only fast, he's been very quick with all of his pitches. The curve ball, the two ball, and the fast ball. Won 17 ball games during the regular season, losing nine. Next pitch, Hegan swings and misses a bad pitch. Good stop by the captain, West Weston. Going through the count on the batter. The outfield, the round shot left. Hegan his first time up in the second inning, grounded out to the third baseman, Hank Thompson. The boy who incidentally has played a lot of fine ball in this series. That's all. Right. Next to Keegan swings and hits the fly ball out into left field. Rose moving in fast, onto the track now, close to the foul line. He makes the catch, just in fair territory. And there are two outs. Keegan slides to Rose in left. And the pitcher, Art Hotterman, is due. And we'll catch somebody coming out of there in just a moment. It's going to be Rudy Rigolato, number eight. Rudy Rigolato, utility infielder, coming into bat for Hotterman. Rigolato is a right-hand batter. Boy who played one year of organized baseball before moving up to the playing club. Looks exceptionally good in spring training. And was given an opportunity to play third base when Al Rosen moved over to play first base for the Indians. Now stepping into the batter's box with two out and the runner on first. Silly let off with a single, but it's still at first. Out 
Outfield playing straight away. No man's pitch is a strike. The third ball, knee high. That curve has worked to perfection for him this afternoon. We have noted many of the Indian batters looking back to the umpire in great surprise on the call of the pitch, which is in there, just about knee high. The next pitch, Rigolato fouls it into the dirt for strike two. Going to the count. The Giants, after winning the first two games in New York, moving out in front of this one five to nothing. Here at Cleveland's huge municipal stadium, before approximately 70,000 people this afternoon. Right to the count. That on deck is Al Smith. Really ready to travel. Leads off the pitch. He's on the ground ball. Slowly hits to the left out of the infield. Thompson charges it up with it. The photo first and Regalado is out. Another fine play by Hank Thompson at third base on a slow roller down the third base line. But he got his man. And for the Indians in the fifth, no run, one hit, one man left. At the end of five, the score is New York. Five, eight, and nothing. Early win of the Indians, who lost a real heartbreaker yesterday, giving up only four hits. Says that when you're all in, there's nothing more breaking than a quick flip to let it you. It really makes you look good and feel good. And early is the boy to know. You do look better and feel better, too. Try a refreshing saving cream shave with today's one-piece Gillette razor. Going into the first half of the sixth inning, we have a new pitcher coming on for the end. Ray Narlesky, young right hand. While we're waiting for him, we pause now 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. W. Now back at Municipal Stadium. Here in Cleveland, the Giants leading 5 to nothing. The first half of the sixth inning. The new pitcher, Ray Narleski. Relieving Art Hotterman, who worked two innings of the ball game, gave up two hits, walked one, struck out one, and allowed one run. Four of the Giant runs are charged to Mike Garcia. Naleski is a member of Al Lopez's pitching staff in the relief department. He is one of the twin firemen, along with Ray Naleski, is Don Mossy. And those two boys have done a whale of a job this year. Naleski's record is three and three, but he started only two ball games. Throughout the regular season, he worked in 42 games. And posted an earned run average of 2.22. First man to face him will be Whitey Lockman. Ottoman came in in the fourth inning, faced the top of the batting order. And now Raynal Lesky, the third Indian pitcher. The Giants lead five to nothing. The first pitch to Lockman is ball one too high. Now Lesky is what the boys refer to as a hard nose. A lad who comes from there in relief. Just wears back and really fires. Next pitch is too high. Another fastball taking off. High and outside. This time the count is ball to no strike. Last year he played under Bertie Tepes, then manager of the Indianapolis Indians in the American Association. Moved up with the parent club this year. The two and nothing pitch is a strike. Right over about knee high. The count is two and one. Hank Majeska, the Indian third baseman in today's ball game, and on the edge of the infield grass. The outfield straight away. The two and six is high for ball three. Three and one the count. Rockman led off for the single in the first inning. The Giants went on to score a run. Added three in the third and one in the fifth to lead five to nothing. Here's the windup in the three one pitch. A foul hit back into the stands, off to the right of the plate, out of play, and the count is ball three, strike two. It's a very happy hot baseball bouncing around. It dropped from the upper deck and down below. Now the three two pitch is ball four, outside. Blackman takes the base on balls. The 
Rockman on first with a base on balls. He was the first man to save each of the three Indian hurlers. Here's Alvin Dowd. He bunks the first hit down the first baseline. Word comes in. Up with it. Can't make a play at second. Throws to a dealer covering first. And Dowd is out on the sacrifice. Play going 3-4. First baseman to second baseman covering. Rockman moves to second. With one out. Now in scoring position. Alvin Dowd. Captain of the New York Giants, one of the key players on this ball club. This is his 15th World Series game. Next man up is Don Healy. He swings on the first pitch and tops it up to the left side of the infield. Hank Majeski is under, and he has it for the second out. There are two gone. And coming up is Willie Mays, number 24. The Giants center fielder, batting champion of the National League. Throughout the regular season. Neither batting champion has been able to do very much in this World Series up to date. Two out with the runner on second. Now that's his first pick, Mays swings and there's a fly ball going out into right field. It's going to drop in there for a base hit. And Lockman racing around third is coming out of score. The throw in is cut off by Wirtz, holding Mays at first base. The Mays comes through with his second hit today. And the Giants take a lead of six to nothing. The next batter is Hank Thompson. He has a perfect day. Two walks and a double. And give him a lot of credit for legging out that base hit for a double. His last time up in the fifth inning. Left-hand batter swings on the first pitch and pops it up. Down the third base line, Hank Majeski moves over into foul territory. Now stride the line and makes it in fair territory. Thompson hops to Hank Majeski. In the sixth inning for the Giants, score one run on one hit, one walk, one man left. And we're going to the last half of the sixth inning of the score. New York Giants six, the Cleveland Indians nothing. Fans, whether you know your baseball inside or out, are or just a casual fan, you'll get a real kick out of the new Gillette World Series record book. Small enough to fit in your pocket, big enough to answer thousands of questions, this handy reference book will get you more fun out of baseball. It has the score of every World Series game, winning pitches, all-time record of every player, diagrams, dimensions, and shooting arrangements of every part. This year's player rosters, basic rules, scoring instructions, just about everything. To get a copy free, ask for that Gillette Super Speed Razor set we told you about. A dollar takes home razor, blue blade dispenser, travel case, book, and all. But don't delay, the supply is getting low. And now going into the last half of the sixth inning, it will be Al Smith leading off. Ruben Gomez has completed his warm-up throws and is all ready to work on Al Smith. Up twice, he walks in the first inning, flying back to the pitcher in the third. Swings on the first pitch at the bounding ball to the shortstop. Big hop taken by Dodge. They throw the first and Smith is out. One pitch. One man out. Six three in case you're throwing along with it. To give you some idea of how effective Gomez has been. Cloud of this inning, the last three innings, he has thrown just 33 pitches. Not wasting. The batter is Bobby Avila. 0 for 1 officially sacrificed in the first inning. The Giants lead 6 to nothing. Gomez pitches ball one outside, a curveball breaking away from him. The outfielder playing him straight away. Bobby Avila, Indian second baseman, batting champion of the American League. There is ball two, high and outside, two and no count. Gomez has given up just two hits. A bargain baseman single for Larry Doby in the fourth inning. A single on the ground into right center by Dave Curry to open the fifth inning. Next pitch is a strike, hitting the inside corner. And that has been Gomez throughout this ball game up to this point. Putting that ball just where he wants to. Ball two, strike one. Into the windup. 
to Pitches and Gomez. Now has the count of ball two and strike to a feeler swung on that ball. I believe he foul tipped it out of the catcher's glove. It dropped to the ground. Two and two. Umpire Conlon picked up the ball. Johnny Cuccinello coaching at third base. Starting encouragement down to the batter. Red Crest, the coacher at first. One out and nobody on in the last half of the sixth inning. Avila steps out. Now, in position, the two-two pitch is swung on him as a fly ball hit into left field. But Dusty Rhodes moving back to Bendrick and has it all the way for up number two. Two gone as Avila fired to left fielder. Dusty Rhodes who has certainly been one of the outstanding performers in this World Series. He just seems to work like magic for Leo DeRocha, the giant manager. Larry Doby steps into the batter's box. He has one out of two. Left hand batter, he takes a strike with a fastball, blazes through the middle. Strike one called. Skies are very much overcast. So, great day here at Cleveland. The next pitch is ball one high and outside. The count is even up. One and one. Two out and nobody on. They're playing Dolby to pull. Deep and well around to right. The one and one pitch is a change up. Ball two. It was over but high. Ball two and strike one. Gomez takes his sign from Catcher Weston. He rocks into the windup. The pitch and Dolby swings. It's a flop fly into left center. Over under this one is Willie Mays, and he makes the catch. Mays backs off from a ball. Makes you believe he's having trouble, but he just wants to give it a basket treatment. He holds the glove right down around the belt. For most of those catches. Dolby flies to Mays and center. Three up and three down for the Indians. No runs, no hits. Nothing is lost, and at the end of six, the score is New York six, Cleveland nothing. You know, when Dusty Rhodes branched that long homer yesterday at the Polo Grounds in New York, I thought about the chapter called Hints on Winning Baseball in the new Gillette World Series record book. Among other things, it illustrates the golf-like swing that's best for connecting with those long, low ones. This is just one of the many things that makes this book so valuable to have handy any time baseball is played or discussed. Now the six inning total. The Giants have six runs, eight hits, no errors. The Indians, no runs, two hits, and two errors. The Indians have left three men on the bases. The Giants have left a total of eight. It'll be Dusty Rose leading off in the first half of the seventh inning. Many of the fans here at the stadium have come up for the Giants half of the seventh inning, the old lucky seventh inning stretch. Number 26, Dusty Rose. Ray Naleski. Swing, a swing and a miss on the first pitch. Now, let's see, working into the windup very hurriedly, came out with a fastball. Boy, if Rose had hit that one, he'd have put it in Lake Erie. Strike one. The next pitch, just swing and a miss. The strike two. Umpire Al Bollock, at second base, now moved over to the first base side of the Keystone. Here's the windup. The orange will pitch, just swing and a miss. Two by the name of Ray Narleski stops the mighty Dusty Rose. He struck him out. The fans here get a tremendous kick out of it. David Williams is up. He swings on the first pitch and misses. Strike one. Rose, of course, has been the sensation of this World Series thus far. 
Next pitch. Right now, let's get Williams. His ball went outside and low with the curve. Count is even up. One and one. One out in the first half of the seventh inning. The Giants lead six to nothing. Now, let's see. Pitches. Ball two. Over but low. The count is two and one. He doesn't waste any time. Takes a short wind up. He just pumps. He had 52 strikeouts in 89 innings during the regular season. Next hit, Williams swings but misses, strike two. Ball two and strike to the count, one out and nobody on. Now let's get the third, Indian pitcher. The triple pitch, ball three, over but high and the swing is out. Full count of three and two. Now, last he came on in the sixth inning, walked one man and gave up a hit. A single for Willie Mays. Next pitch, Williams swings at the ground ball to Strickland at short. Up with it, here's the sort of first, and Williams is out. Rounding out, short to first. There are two gone, and the batter is West Westrom. Westrom has one out of three. A single his last time, up to drive and a run. In the second inning, he struck out. In the third, he grounded out as he attempted to pull away from the pitch. He hit a little grounder right back to the pitch of Mike Garcia. Now, that's his first pitch to him is a strike with a curve, working to the outside corner waist time. The Giants lead 6 to nothing. the third game of the 1954 World Series. Outfielders are straight away for Weston. Now let's see, okay's the time. The pitch is high. That fastball popping out of Hegan's ground, rolling off to the left of the plate. Ball one and strike one. Now let's see, his dad played for the Boston Red Sox quite some years ago. He's an infielder. Here's the wind-up. The one and one pitch. Weston swings and misses. It's strike two. One and two the count on the batter. Two out and nobody on. The first half of the seventh. The one and two pitch. Weston swings and misses. He struck him out. A fine performance by the rookie right-hander. In the seventh for the Giants, no runs, no hits, nothing is crossed. And the fans now come up for the last half of the seventh inning, the old home stretch. At the end of six and a half innings, the score is New York six, season nothing. Hey, you should have been with us on the baseball special last night. Both teams were aboard, and you never saw a finer-looking bunch of young men. They're sharp, they're alert, and they have the money to buy the things they want. So when I tell you they shave with the Gillette razor, almost to a man, it ought to mean a lot to you. I know how they shave because I see them in the clubhouses. They want to look clean, well shaved. They want the refreshed feeling they get from a shower. Shaving cream and a fast, comfortable shave with a Gillette blue blade in the Gillette Super Speed Razor. Those are beautiful blades, precisely honed, smoothly cropped. Quality is so uniform that each of them shaves, you'll never know how easy until you try Get them in handy dispensers with safety compartments for your place. 20 for 98 cents, 10 for 49 cents. And now back here at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, the home of the American League Indians. The attendance, 71,555. Last of the seventh and Vic Works leads off. First pitch to him by Gomez is ball one, inside and low. Ball on the count. Giants lead, six to nothing. There's ball two, a fast ball. In too close to the batter. Ball to no strike. The outfielder skated around toward right. First is 0 for two. The next pitch. Next call. 
And in the outside corner with the screwball. Ball two, strike one. Willie Mays moving around in center field. Now he's just about straight away. Next pitch is one of the best of drives going to get out into right center. Mays is chasing after that ball. And it is on its way for a home run. First baseman coming up with hit number three and the Indians' first run of the day, a home run over the right center field fence. There's a low line drive, not a towering homer. First of all, it was very solidly hit. And then it's batter is Hank Majeski. Nobody out, Majeski, right hand batter steps in. He is 0 for 2. Hit into a double play last time up. 71,555 fans getting a big kick out of seeing words come through with his home run. Al Newhouser, left-hander, starts warming up in the Indian bullpen. All right, the first pitch to Majeski. Ball went outside with a serve. Ball won the count. That on deck is Dave Silly. The Giants lead 6-1. The Indians rest avoiding the whitewash for that home run. Next pitch is ball two inside. Ball two, no strike. The boys down in the giant bullpen looking in towards the dugout. But so far, there's been no action in the giant bullpen. Nobody out, nobody on. The pitch is a strike. Gomez laid a curve right over the heart of the plate. Ball two and strike one. Hockney lives around to a Here's the windup. The two and pitch is swung on the ground ball to the second baseman. Big hop taken by Williams. The throw to first and Majeski is out. And away. Rounding out. Second to first. Four three. Brings up number 17, Dave Philly. In two trips to the plate, he has a walk and a single. His single was a ground ball in the right center. Looks at ball one outside and low. First pitch. Ball on the count. Batter on deck is George Strickland. Gomez okays the sign. The pitch is a strike with a fastball knee high. Even up, ball one and strike one. Works' home run was hit number three off Gomez. The one and one pitch. Philly takes the strike with a changeup. Ball one and strike two. Philly now steps back to talk to the umpire, Jocko Conlon. Strike two. Billy asking umpire Conlon where that ball was, and he told him right over. The next pitch is ball two, high and outside. The outfielders are shaded just a bit toward right for Philly. Here's the wind-up. The two-two pitch is swinging a miss. He struck him out. Billy goes down swinging. That is the second strikeout for Ruben Gomez. He has walked only two batters. And now it's George Strickland stepping into the batter's box, coming up with two out and nobody on. Takes a fastball strike. Right in there. 
Last half of the seventh inning, the Giants lead by a score of 6-1. to one. Next pitch, Strickland swings and pops this one up to the right side of the infield. Going back on the edge of the grass is Whitey Lockman, and he makes the catch. The third out. And the Indians in the seventh get one run, one hit. Vic Wirtz is home run. And at the end of seven, the score is New York six, Cleveland one. Bobby Avila, who won the American League batting title with a 341 average, has gone two for 11 so far in this World Series of 1954. He has quite a jinx to overcome because batting champions generally do poorly in the series. To mention a few from the all-time series roster in the Gillette World Series record book, Ted Williams averages 200, Stan Musial 256, and Jackie Robinson 242. The World Series is the best four out of seven. The Giants won the first two games in New York and lead the Indians on their home grounds right here in Cleveland in this third game by a score of 6-1 to one as we head into the first half of the eighth inning. The Giants will lead off with pitcher Gomez. Getting a nice hand from the crowd as he comes up. He's turned in a fine performance. Batter. He lined to center field and struck out twice. I'll ask his first pitch. He swings and misses. Strike one. The next pitch to him. He swings on it and pops it up to the infield. Right by second base is George Strickland. He makes the catch for out number one. Gomez popped to George Strickland, the shortstop. Now the top of the batting order. Whitey Lockman, left-hand batter, number 25. He has a single and a walk in four trips to the plate. Stands deep in the batter's box and chokes up on the bat. Swings on the first pitch. It's a ground ball to Wirtz at first. Wirtz takes it, races to the bag, ahead of the runner for out number two. Lockman grounded out to Wirtz, unassisted. That brings up Alvin Dock. Two out, and nobody on. First half of the eighth inning. Dark, a right-hand batter, has one out of three officially. He sacrificed his last trip to the plate. And he tries to hold back, but swings and hits an easy grounder right back to the pitcher. And Oleski takes, throws to first, and the Giants are retired in order. Three down, no runs, no hits for the Giants. And going into the last half of the eighth inning, the score is New York 6, Cleveland 1. Say, have you ever noticed that guys who use Gillette razors are pretty good rooters for the kind of shaves they get? And that goes for the men who use Gillette three-piece razors, too. Now, here's a very special how-do-you-do to them. And a very special message, too. The Gillette three-piece razor is a fine shaving instrument. No question about it. But we'd like to have you try our one-piece Gillette Super Speed Razor. It delivers the same smooth, refreshing shaves. But they're so much easier to come by. Blades change in an instant. Nothing to take apart. And simply rinse under a faucet to clean. One dollar will modernize your Gillette shaving equipment. Buy a Gillette Super Speed Razor and Blue Blade Dispenser in a travel case. Right now, you get the Gillette World Series record book attached free. A pretty big dollar's worth, if you ask us. Now, before we go into the last half of the eighth inning, let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WGN Chicago. Now back at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, the last half of the eighth, and a pinch hitter coming up for Jim Hegan. As Al Lopez calls upon his reserves to get something started for his tribe. Trailing in the series, two games to nothing, and trailing in this ball game, six to one. Bill Glenn is batting for Hegan, left-hand batter. Swings on the first pitch, and it's a fly ball into right field. Coming over hard for it is Bill Glenn. Don Mueller, he got a glove on the ball, but it was a sinking 
fine try. He couldn't handle it. It dropped to the ground for a two-base hit. Another pinch hitter coming out. Dale Mitchell, number three. Batting for Ray Norleski. Mitchell is a left-hander. Hails from Oklahoma City. Product of Oklahoma University. Mitchell, during the regular season, batted 283, but was used mostly in the pinch hitter role. Port Wilhelm, a right-hander, and Wendy McCall, a left-hander, start warming up for the New York Giants. First pitch to Mitchell. He swings and hits the ground ball to the first baseman. Lachman takes it, races to the bag. As Glenn moves to third, Mitchell is out. Mitchell grounding out on the first pitch. Lachman unassisted. Glenn is on third. And the top of the batting order is coming up. Don Mossy, a left-hander, is now warming up for the Indians. So is Al Maradon, a catcher. Al Smith is the batter. He has a walk in three trips. First pitch to him is a strike. Third ball was good to the knees. Right over. Strike one. Glenn is on third with one out. Last half of the eighth inning, the Giants lead by a score of six to one. Outfield pulled around toward left. Smith standing deep in the batter's box. Well back of the plate. Takes ball one outside and low with a curve, breaking into the dirt. Bobby Avila is on deck. Here's the windup. Lynn makes the false start from third. The pitch is swung on, fouled down the third baseline, out of play. Ball one and strike two. Gomez keeping the ball low to Smith. He fouled that one off his foot. Quite a bit of pain. He steps again back from the plate. Like this way, the Yellow Jays protected Ten guard. Smith is always fouling the ball off onto his own foot, down to left and in the leg. Here's the windup. The one and two pitch, ball two, outside. He started to go for it, but held back in time to take ball two. Runner on third with one out. Lynn doubled. Off Mueller's glove and right, moved up as Mitchell grounded out. The pitch is low into the dirt for ball three. And the string is out. Full count of three and two on Al Smith. The Indians bouncing back against the fine pitching of Ruben Gomez, who has given up only four hits. Lynn is on third with one out. The count three and two. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Down the first baseline, curving back into the crowd. Out of play. Whitey Lockman raced over but no chance to get it. New ball is tossed into play. Gomez is all set. Here's the windup. The 3 2 pitch. Hit foul down the third baseline, and Glenn had to jump out of the way of that ball. Dusty Rhodes racing over, taking no chances on whether it was foul. Now, fair. Field of that ball right where the boys are warming up McCall and Wilhelm. Smith the batter with a count three and two. Then on third, the outfield around toward left. Time is called. Smith steps out of the batter's box. All 
side. The three-two pitch is run. A ground ball to the shortstop. Dark is up with it. Glenn is coming on to score. The throw is high. And here goes Smith to second. He races around second. Hoffman is up with the ball. The throw across the diamond. Smith holds up and goes back to second. The score is now New York six, Cleveland two, and Smith is on second. That could well be a break for the Indians. We'll get the official call on it. It is a base hit and an arrow. A hit to deep shortstop. And an arrow. The batter is Bobby Avila. The score is 6 to 2. The run batted in for Al Smith. Glenn scored. He's, Smith is now in second. The first pitch to Avila. Ball one high and inside. Smith goes to second on the throwing error by Alvin Dahl. That's the first giant error of the game and the third for both teams. The Indians have two. One out here in the last half of the eighth inning. Smith on second. Takes the lead. The next pitch. Avila takes ball two inside and low. The Giants now have a total of four errors for the three games of the 54 World Series. The Indians, two. Next pitch. Avila takes ball three high and inside. Ball three, no strikes. Matter on deck is Larry Doby. The score is New York, six, Cleveland, two. The outfield playing straight away. Gomez okays the sign. The pitch is a strike. The outside corner, waist high. Three and one the count. Avila may not let this one go by. Naturally, he'd like to get on if possible. They'll be coming up. There's ball four. Too high. And Avila takes a walk. Coming up is Harry Doby. And here comes Leo DeRocha out of the giant dugout. We'll have a little conference out there on the mound. The Indians have runners on first and second with one out. You know, fans, this is only the third World Series for Cleveland, yet its players have achieved the greatest single batting and fielding feats possible. In 1920, Elmer Smith slammed a homer with the bases loaded. Bill Wamgans made a triple play unassisted. Now, this is the kind of valuable baseball information that's packed into the 112 pages of the Gillette World Series record book. Be sure to get yours. Now, umpire Jocko Conlon goes out, and it looks like a new pitcher is going to be called into the game. Fred Wilhelm. DeRocha making with the knuckler sign, his right hand. And that is going to be all for Ruben Gomez. Wilhelm, a knuckleball pitcher, is coming into the game to face Larry Doby. So Gomez, running into a bit of trouble here in the last half of the eighth inning, has worked seven and one-third innings. He has given up five hits. He has walked three men. He has struck out two and has allowed two runs and is leaving two men on. Should they score, they will be charged against him. And now we have a change in our scoring. We've just had word from the official scorers that Al Smith does not get a base hit. However, he does get a run batted in. It is a two-base throwing error charged to Alvin Dobb. So Gomez has given up only four hits. 
You got that in your scoring? Seven in the third innings. Given up four hits, walked three, struck out two. Gave up two runs and is leaving two men on. Wilhelm, wearing number 49, taking his warm-up throws. He is different from most knuckleball pitchers in that he throws a fast knuckler. It's a knuckleball, but it's very fast. Still works the same and is just as hard, if not harder, to hit. Larry Doby, who was the hitting star of the 1948 World Series against the Boston Braves, now has a chance to come through for his ball club. All right, Wilhelm says he's ready to work. Doby steps in. Smith is on second. Bobby Avila is on first. Vic Works is on deck. Indians trailing by four runs. Marv Grissom now joins Wendy McCall, the left-hander, warming up in the bullpen. Grissom is the right-hander that helped in the first game. Actually won it. All right, Wilhelm is ready. Here's the stretch. The pitch to Dobie. He swings and misses. Strike one. Boy, and there was no question about what he wanted. He was swinging for the distance. There's Al. He was swinging for defense. The runners move off. The next pitch swung on. A ground ball is hit to the first baseman. Lockman takes it, races to the bag ahead of Doby, and Doby is out in a close play. The runners move up. Doby tried a slide in the first base, but Lockman beat him there. Two out, and the batter is Vic Wirtz. The Giants lead by a score of 6-2. to two. Now time is called. Westrom goes out to talk with Wilhelm. Leo DeRocha proving that he can reach into the bag and come up with some fine relief pitching. Bob Grissom got credit for winning the first game of the World Series. Yesterday it was Johnny Antonelli all the way. First pitch to Wirtz now. His ball went outside. They'll try to keep it away from his power. Batter on deck is a right-hand batter, Hank Majeski. Smith is on third. Avila on second. The Giants lead 6-2. to There are two out. Here's the windup. The next pitch is a strike hitting the outside corner waist side. Ball one and strike one. Wirtz has certainly been the hitting star of the series for the Indians thus far, just as Rhodes has been for the Giants. Next pitch, fouled back to the screen. And now the pitcher has him in the hole. Ball one and strike two. One and two count. Wilhelm. Didn't like the ball that he got there. Tossed it back into the catcher. And the little left-hander. The umpire back of the plate. Jock O'Conlon. Throws another out. Into the windup. The one and two pitch. Wirtz swings and he misses. He struck him out. Wirtz goes down swinging. And Mr. Wilhelm did a mighty fine job. A right-hand pitcher against two left-hand batters. The Indians in the eighth inning get just the one run on one hit. There was one giant error, and two men were left on the bases. At the end of eight innings, the score is New York 6, Cleveland 2. Look sharp, feel sharp. Be sharp and listen, mister, how are you fixed for plays? Do you have plenty? How are you fixed for plays? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause the worn out plays make shaven mighty tough. How are you fixed for plays? Better look to let the plays we mean. And our fans, we're back at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. 
going into the first half of the ninth inning of the third World Series game between the New York Giants and the Cleveland Indians. The new tribe pitcher is number 12, Darren Mossy. Mossy is making his second appearance in the World Series. Appeared in 40 ball games during the regular season. And young Hal Narragon is the Indian catcher. Number 18, Hal Narragon. He has just returned from the Marines this year and was carried by the ball club as that extra service man. He hails from Robertson, Ohio. He appeared in 45 ball games, posted a batting average of 238. And now in the first half of the ninth, it'll be Don Mueller leading off for the Giants, left-hand batter number 22 against left-hand pitcher Don Mossy. Mueller has one out of four and has scored two runs. Swings on the first pitch and wraps a line drive out over the third baseman's head into left field. A base hit. Smith is up with it. The throw to the infield. Holds it to a single. Mueller, line the first pitch into left. His hit into left field in the third inning was a beautiful thing to see. With a hit and run on, Dark was moving. Mueller hit one through the hole into left field. Now here's Willie Mays. Here's two out of four. Two singles, both in the right field. He's a right-hand batter. Nobody out. First pitch is a strike, a fastball, letter high. Runner on first. Don Mueller leads away. Nobody out. The next pitch is high and outside with a curve that refused. Ball one and strike one. May is today coming up with his first World Series hits. Has two of them now. The Giants have a total of nine, as against four for the Indians. One and one the count. Here's the stretch. The pitch is swung on and fouled back into the stands, out of play. Count moves to ball one and strike two on the batter. Willie Mays, number 24. On deck is Hank Thompson. All right, Marcy okays the sign from his young battery mate, Al Maragon. Checks the runner. The one and two pitch is high. Ball two. Ball two and strike two. Mays has made his hits pay off today. Two hits, two runs batted in. Mueller takes the lead off, ready to travel. The two-two pitch, and it is ball three. A bit too high. Ball three, strike two. Mays almost went through with the swing. But held back just in time, did not break the wrist. Ball three, strike two, and now Mueller will be moving. The stretch and the payoff pitch is swung. There's a line drive. Hits sharply into left center. Mueller makes the turn at second. He's going for third. He'll be in there standing up. Dobie's throw is to second. Mays holding it first. Three hits for Mays, and he has come through each time with men on base. And that's the kind of a hitter you like. The guy that can deliver when there are runners on the sacks. Giant runners on first and third. Nobody out. The batter is Henry Thompson, third baseman. He has two walks and a double. Getting more action down in the Indian bullpen now as Bob Hooper starts to warm up. Right-hander. First pitch to Thompson. Hits a line drive to Strickland. Strickland's throw back to first and Mays is doubled. Mays was halfway to second and had not the slightest chance of getting back. And with one pitch, Marcy erases two men. Mueller is holding at third. That's the first double play for the Indians. And just the second 
of the World Series. Thompson ran to Strickland, who doubled Mays at first. Here's Dusty Rhodes up. Two out, runner on third. Mays was struck out by Noleski in the seventh inning. First pitch to him. He swings, and it's a ground ball foul down the first baseline. Out of play, and the count is strike one. Seven runs batted in in this World Series, and this is just the third game. So the Giants are leading by a score of 6-2, to two. and unless the Indians can pull their forces together, it looks like an abbreviated one. Next pitch is ball one high and inside. One and one the count. Neither manager has named a starting pitcher for tomorrow's fourth game. Here's the wind-up. The pitch is too low for ball two. Two and one the count. Mueller on third. He let off with a single. Moved to third on Mays. Is hit into left center. Thompson lined into a double play. The outfield playing straight away. The next pitch to May to Rhodes is ball three inside and low. Three and one to count. Ball three, strike one. Rhodes came on in the third inning as a pinch hitter for Monty Irvin. Singled into right field. Driving in two runs. Green run the county. Maybe gunning for it. Here's the windup. And the pitch is a strike call. A little high. Full count of three and two on the batter. Fans start buzzing a little bit as Marcy gets ready for the big pitch. The count three and two. With two out in the first half of the ninth inning, the Giants lead by a score of six to two. Marcy in action. The three two pitch. Just swing and a miss. He struck him out. Gave him a high curveball, and Rhodes went for it, struck him out. Second time. And two rookies turned the trick. So in the eighth inning for the Giants, no runs. They had two hits, one man left. And going into the last half of the ninth inning, the score is New York 6, Cleveland 2. You know, friends, unless you're an expert, you may have two points of today's game. So stay tuned after the last out and your old man baseball himself, Bill Corum, when he reviews the game and points up the day's play as only he can. Well, it's the last half of the ninth inning. And the Indians have just three outs. To get back into this game and to get into the World Series. They have yet to post a victory. The Giants holding the lead two games to none and leading this game by four runs, six to two. The Giants have selected ten hits off Indian pitching. Five of them coming off Scotter Garcia, two off Art Hardeman, who relieved in the fourth. Naleski gave up one hit. And Marcy gave up two. However, the Giants failed to score against Marcy in the one inning that he worked. Hank Majeski will lead off for the Indians. Bottom half of the batting order is up. Mark Wilhelm, the knuckleball hurler. Hits is a strike. First pitch was right in there, waist time. Majeski is looking for his first hit today. He is 0 for 3. Sounded out twice and fouled out. Wilhelm pitches a strike to the inside corner. And there's that knuckler. Boy, that's a tough one. Indian batters have really been silent. Ruben Gomez giving up only four hits. Wilhelm coming on in the eighth inning to put out the fire. Getting Doby and Works, two left-hand batters. That's ball one inside, and low to Majeska. The count moves to ball one and strike two.
The outfield around toward left. Four Elm checks his sign with catcher Weston. The one and two pitch. Ball two outside and low with a curveball. Ball two and strike two. 71,555 fans in today's ball game, bringing the total to 100, 183,405 for the three games of the 1954 series. All right, the 2-2 pitch. Majeski takes strike three to the inside corner. He struck him out. Run away. Well, the Indians have used four pitches today. They could sure use a pair like Busy and Paul Dean, right? Remember, they pitched and won all four games of the 34 World Series for the St. Louis Cardinals. Information like this gives you more baseball pleasure. And the Gillette World Series record book is filled with it. One out. Dave Philly is up. Swings on the first pitch. It's a ground ball to the second base and knocked down by Williams. They throw the first, and Philly is out on a close play. There's that hustle in that giant infield, and it'll pay off every time. Jimmy Dykes used to say, stop him with your chest, your knee, your elbow, or anything, but go and get him and throw that batter out. Billy grounding out, second to first, 4-3. Four, there are two gone, and we're getting a pinch hitter. Dave Pope, batting for George Strickland. Two up and two down for the Indians here in the ninth. The Giants lead by a score of six to two. Pope is a left hand batter. First pitch, he swings on it. The ground ball to the right side of the infield. Williams covers over fast up at it. They throw the first. And on a pretty play, Pope is out. Pope grounding out. Williams to first. And the Indians bite the dust. One, two, three. No runs. No hit. Nothing across. And the final score. New York, six runs, ten hits, one error. Cleveland, two runs, four hits, and two errors. The winning pitcher, Ruben Gomez. The losing pitcher, Mike Garcia. Now in just a moment, Bill Corum will review the highlights of today's game for you. Elvis and Nancy, a home permanent that's really trouble-free. It's new self-timing pony with 15-minute waiting motion. With this new pony, you're sure of perfect timing every time. There's no clock checking, no test curls, no guesswork. Your self-timing pony is timed the right. Your waves can't go wrong. Takes only minutes to wave and neutralize. Gives you months of more carefree waves. It's the one permanent that's fast and lasts. And your wave will be soft and natural right from the very first day. So no matter how happy you were with your last permanent, no matter what kind it was or what you paid for it, you'll like this new self-timing Tony so much better. It's the easiest, fastest, surest way to the most natural wave of your life. Get yours today. It's a new, new Tony, a false Tony. It's self-timing, 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 self-timing Tony. Well, the play stop the presses and lead all news, I guess, of this third World Series game here in beautiful Municipal Stadium in Cleveland before this great crowd this afternoon was that the Indians finally got Dusty Rhodes out. In fact, they got him out twice. Ray Norleski Sandy and then Don Murphy. That last time he was at bat in the ninth inning, the last out to the Giants. Before that happened, the dusty one had driven in two more runs to bring his total up to that point, up to seven, and the record for four games is only nine, held by Lou Gehrig. So he was still in there swinging when he went up to pitch hit, and in the season, and in this series, as a pinch hitter, he's gone 18 for 48, and that is some pinch hitting. And Ruben, Ruben, I've been thinking that Gomez was quite a pitcher out there this afternoon. I don't know for sure that when the Indians put on their little stir there in the eighth inning, DeRocha would have had to take him out. But, of course, he's got such a tremendous uh, bullpen, and that one fellow particularly with the way to go ball that finished up, nobody hits him when he's uh, like that much. Tony Cusinelli was over in Brooklyn sitting with Tom Sheehan, 
scouting the Giants, one of those games over in Brooklyn, and uh, Hart came in, Wilhelm, and Fresco Thompson, some of them sitting there, and they were watching this ball. If you ever notice it and see Weston try to catch it, you have to jump at it. Another ball just goes everywhere and anywhere. So Thompson said to Cucinella, he said, Tony, maybe you better not knock their starting pitcher out. And that's the way Wilhelm finished up here this afternoon for Gomez. It was a laughing game for the Giants, you might say. And right now, it would look very much as if they have the Indians well on the run, even here in their home to see. Their own big mom, they didn't look very good. Their pitching wasn't too strong. Mike Garcia, the big bear, just didn't have it this afternoon. And after Rhodes came in in his daily act, replacing Irving at the bat and made his uh, big pinch hit driving in the two runs, well, that was pretty much the ball game. Of course, Vic Wirtz uh, finally found out how to get a ball over Willie Mays' head. He hit it over the fence. For a tremendous home run, the ball was really tattooed, and uh, that's one way the Indians can keep from leaving men on bases. As things stand now, they've uh, left uh, more men on bases in this series than some armies have soldiers. They have loaded them up and two on and one on right through the series, but uh, it seems almost impossible for them to get the big hit when they need it. Need it. And they needed it badly this afternoon because the Giants had their hitting clothes on right down the line. They were whacking that ball solid. Little, little Willie Mays came up with three rousing hits, good clean hits. And uh, Dark and all the gang, Mueller, the whole bunch, was, were hitting that ball very well. Whitey Lockman and West West from driving in the run. And it was a team victory for the Giants with a very fine pitching job by Gomez. And, of course, now tomorrow, DeRosa can do pretty near anything. He's got some other pretty good pitchers in there, and he could use them two or three at a time or anything he wants to now. I don't know when uh, an American League team, I mean, a National League team ever won four straight from an American League team in the World Series. I would have to go clear back to 1914, the Athletics and Braves, so it probably has happened since, but it's been a long time. Now, this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Before signing off, I want to thank uh, our engineers, Jim Egan and Al Rasnick, our statistician, Frank Zuzulo, and this program was directed and produced under the supervision of mutual sports director, Paul Jonas. Now, don't forget, tomorrow we bring you the fourth game of the 1954 World Series from this day municipal stadium in Cleveland. Make a note that we'll be on the air at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the same as today. Until then, folks, smooth sailing. Bruce Davies, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Tracy Razor Company, and yours in sports, Bill Paul.